in sewing gives you. Yeah. So if I just take this off now, you can imagine that what I've done, you would do this all over. So you would have lots of these connecting threads. Can you see these ones? Oh, yes. Where you've hopped from bit to bit. So you would, all you would do is just snip them off. Obviously, you'd spend a little bit more time than I'm doing. But if you just snip them like that... So you're hopping like the hair. You're hopping like the hair, yeah. yeah. And it actually, cutting the threads is the slowest part of it. So you can see with these, you can go all over in different ways. And you can actually mix and match your threads. That's a good idea. So you could put a bit of metallic in this, monofilament in this, different colours in this, and just keep going up and down and round the hair. Little ones, big ones. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about doing seed stitch by hand. And you can see on the sample that you're using, I did some seed stitch at the bottom of the hair. Yes, I see that, just there. So you know you could embellish this as much as you want to yeah love because that. with the hoop the instructions tell you to mark out your area so you know the area that you're stitching into yeah, it's a good idea so you can stitch grass seed heads whatever you want to you yeah, could really you go to town it. on this piece yes and you could put like a, a tree branch coming in from the side yeah, to give it a bit you of could do yes and because the clock mechanism has got quite a high um, I can't remember what you call this bit, quite a high mm, thread. Thread, that's uh, the word, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is thread, yes. Yeah. You could put little seed beads on it if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Nothing too heavy because you can see, if you turn it round a minute, Janice, you can see, that's it, that there's a square of pelmet violin on there, which yeah. is that, and that's very, very heavy. It's almost like cardstock, and that's what holds that clock mechanism in place because yeah. the clock mechanism is quite light, even with the battery. But if you miss that bit out, yes. it will sag. You've got to make sure that bit is in your clock. Make sure you get that support yeah. on there. That's included in the That's kit. That's included in it the kit. It is included yes. with the instructions, so you'll know exactly where to put that. Yeah. And then you can put some felt over the back of it, so you won't see that mechanism, but with yeah. a little slit to get the battery exactly. in yes. and out, yeah. which is perfect. And then you can see there, uh, there's no uh, dragging down with uh, the mechanism that is behind. But you've got that beautiful hair looking up, and you've got the cloth the hands placed perfectly yeah. it's only 20 pounds and 99 pence if you want to go for this kit you also get the hoop as well yeah. to complete that you can and you can see if I just put these hands together you know you, you could I've got it about here on the clock there is enough fabric if you wanted to to make it more central as well yes so you, but you just need to mark where you're going to make your hole yes because I don't advise doing it on the hair no, it's not going to look too good. That's probably no. something I would do. And, and I'd <laughs> stitch away and then I'd turn around and it'd be going straight through his yeah. eye, which is not a good thing. Um, um, yeah. yeah. And one little tip as well is this is quite thick here, this thread that we're going to call it. Mm. But I always start with a tiny hole and then make it a little bit bigger, yeah. a little bit bigger. And there were, full, there were photographs in the instructions as well to show yeah. people what to do. So it's not just the words, it's photographs yeah. as well to show people what to do. It's like drilling into a wall. If you're not sure, always go with a smaller drill to begin yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We start off small. Yeah. Uh, £20 and 99 pence. Uh, that is small, of course, as far as prices are concerned for this fabulous clock. Uh, 081400 is the item number. If you do want to go for the book, it is available. Uh, just It's a TV exclusive as well. Very busy for that book. Uh, it's a fabulous book. All the designs in it uh, are by Angela. They are full size, so you don't need to take them out and enlarge them. They're all full size for you. There are 70 pages in the book. There are 10 different projects, but there's some really nice techniques in there. There are some lovely words by Angela herself, and of course there are some. Uh, there is some information, should I say, uh, about hairs and about why we love them so much. It's all about how you're loving that, though. The drove of hairs in stitches, one two seven three five one. Very very busy. TV exclusive for that book. It's a great price, great gifting price. You know, when you're thinking about a gift for somebody, it's around about that price point mark that makes a very, very special gift. It could be a leaving gift for somebody. Uh, the book itself, again, it's a TV exclusive, self-published by Angela, and the reason being, she wanted to make sure that you got the very best experience. I mean, look at him or her. Uh, beautiful imagery, gorgeous. And then we can see we've got some techniques in here, uh, which is um, 
really um, good information. We've got the canther, we've got the needle turn applique, how to do it correctly, how to do it the right way. Tools for the trade, uh, which is good. So you've got your patchwork information, what you need there. Uh, turning over here, you can see you've got the moon gazing hair cushion. Beautiful design, really like that. Lots of different projects from cushions to bags. You've also got quilt um, projects in here. That's the, uh, the quilt that we saw earlier on at the demonstration area. So plenty of designs for you to make and create in the patterns themselves in the back of the book. Let me just turn this to get this for you. They're all to size, so you don't need to actually take them out and enlarge them because they're all to size. They're all perfect. Um, that is available at fifteen pounds and ninety nine pence. One two seven three five one. Now the clock we were just talking about. So busy for that, and the clock comes in this beautiful uh, bag as well. So it's a really nice gift idea. Um, you could make this and create it and give it to somebody. You could then pop the clock into the bag itself and give it as a gift. You could put the whole kit that you get here into the bag, the whole kit and caboodle, and give that to somebody so that they can make and design. It is the Moon Gazing Hair Applique Clock. You get all the instructions, all the materials, you get the needle, and you get the clock mechanism. All you need is your self and a battery to pop in. So as long as you've got the time, you'll have the time. £20.99, 081400. Right, love, you know I love foxes and this is a gorgeous, gorgeous design. 20% of the stock of this has gone already. Look at that tail. It's beautiful, isn't it? That's what I love about foxes. They've got such a gorgeous tail. Uh, and this fox sitting up proud. You can add to this if you want to, but with the kit, you get your threads. There you go, to do the canter work. You get the fabric to place your threads onto, and you get the full instructions as well. The frame, of course, will be something that you put it into. You might put it on a canvas. You might put it into a frame like this, uh, or you might place it onto a cushion, make it decorative. £16.49, pence, eight five six six. 26 is your item number. Now, nearly half the stock of the trust hair has gone. Beautiful design this is. You've got the two hairs there. It could be the mummy and the baby. It could be the dad and the baby. Uh, but it's a beautiful image to have with that sunshine in the background just sitting there um, as the hair is telling those wise tales. Or it could be the other way around. You never know. You know what it's like in this day and age. It could be the other way round. Sixteen pounds and forty-nine pence. You get everything you need: the needle, you get the threads, you get the fabric as well. So you've got that lovely blue fabric in there, and you've got the white fabric to use, and you've got the full instructions. Sixteen pounds and forty-nine pence. Uh, the frame again is optional for, um, because this is something we've just provided to put it into. Uh, you buy that yourself, or place it on canvas. Do whatever you like. Next up, the hope hair. Um, now Anne has bought the hope hair. And she is making it for uh, a 70th birthday present. We've probably just let the cat out the bag. Oh. <laughs> but we don't, but there are plenty ands around, I hope. Oh no, there's somebody now sitting in their home going, well I'm 69, my birthday's next week, and my best friend's Am. Thanks Janice. <gasps> Just look surprised when you get it, okay? Uh, everything is possible, even looking surprised when you get this if your name is, uh, or your best friend is Anne. It's a lovely design, isn't it? Something to have on your wall, something to, for you to look at every single day. It's on linen as well. And this is something which is very personal to Angela herself. Um, it's gorgeous. And there you go, there's that linen, and you've got the hair, and anything is possible. 16 pounds, 95 pence, everything you need there. You get the linen, the needle, you get the threads, and you get the instructions, the full instructions in there, and the design to make and create that. 744408 is your item number. Now, the moon gazing hair, also proven to be very, very popular. Uh, £16.49. 328874 is your item number for this. It's brand new today. It's a lovely design, isn't it? And you've got, it could be the moonlight, it could be the sunshine uh, behind that hair, but this is called the moon gazing hair kit. So I think that really is a, a lovely image to have the hair gazing up at the moon. Because as Angela said, in the countryside, you're always near a hair, but you never see them. So it's quite mythical, isn't it, to have them sitting there just gazing up at the moon like that full moon. Love that. £16.49 for the whole kit. 328874. 
Now, over half the stock of the starter kit has gone. Uh, you get your fabrics, you get your threads, and you get this fabulous book design as well. £17.49. And inside here, you can see you've got all the information for your stitches. It is your starter kit, as it says, so it will guide you through step by step. And you've got some lovely patterns in there as well to follow. So you've got your hearts in there. You've got your pods, your poppy pods. Love those, such a great image. Uh, you've also got your hummingbird, which looks beautiful when you use the threads and the colours. You've got your cat, you've got an elephant in there. Uh, beautiful. Uh, and there you go, there's Angela at the back. Lovely photo, lovely photo. Um, if you do want to go for that, very, very busy, 137261. Now, the India book bundle, 70% uh, of the stock has gone. And am I right in thinking that Cantha originated in, in India? Yes, you see, you learn something every day. Um, so this is a beautiful, beautiful kit to get. Uh, so you get the book and you also get the uh, fabrics as well. This is going very, very quickly, very, very quickly. If you do want to get that, pop it into your basket, 766847, very busy. And something that we haven't seen yet that is also very, very busy is the flamingo. Again, you buy the frame, you can put it onto canvas board, it's entirely up to you. Uh, this is gorgeous. So you get the instructions, you get beautifully coloured thread and the fabric to make this flamingo. I, lo I love, I love the quilting in the background. It's the water. It's really, it's lovely. That is gorgeous. And of course, you can do that by hand. Very, very effective. Very effective. And um, I'll have a question for Angela about that when we sit down. I've got a question. Yes. Uh, 837 962 is your item number if you want to go for that one. Take a look at the website. This is where you can head to, uh, to, to see all the items available for you on the show. And you can select. Remember, if your basket comes to £6 or more, you can open up a flexi buy, which means you can split the cost into two. There's so much on the show. You might just be stocking up your baskets and then see that your basket is now perhaps over £60. That's fine. You can split the cost into two. Pay half this month and then another half in the next month. Now, I did promise I've got a question, Angela, because I love to learn from you. Um, really like this image because of the perspective, because of the water in the background. But here's my question. Do you do the water background first and then the flamingo, or the flamingo and then the water background? I do the flamingo, then the water background. Right. Perfect. But actually, it doesn't matter. I tend to do the central image first, okay. or, or the bit where the most stitching is first, yes. because you're least likely then to have sort of a, a bumpy design. Yes. Yeah. So if you do the main image first of all, yeah. and then you stitch the background, it, it's more likely to lie straight. Perfect. So that's see? what I that's tend to question. do. Thank you. I love it. See? It's great when you've got an expert here. But, but, with the, yeah. but with the water, it took me longer to draw it and design it than it did to stitch it. <laughs> yeah. It took me about four times as long to get it right know, as a design than to stitch it. Well, you've designed it perfectly. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's lovely because it's random. Yeah. And, and sometimes it, they're the hardest patterns they to do. They are, exactly. And it's a variegated blue thread as well. I'm not sure. It's very subtle variegated, but you can see because it's variegated, oh, yeah. it just looks like water. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, you're right. It's very subtle. You can see, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. That a yeah. bit lighter up there. Yeah, I can see yeah. that now. Perfect. Yeah. And again, suitable for any level of stitcher. I really, I'm so passionate about getting people to stitch because cancer is so relaxing. Yes. Once it's been mapped out, you can stitch anywhere. Yeah. So it's ideal portable stitching as well. Yeah, it's a good idea. And that will be so satisfying. We were talking earlier when you stitch away, uh, time just goes. And it's a really nice place to be. Mm. And then when you stop and you look back at what you've done, yes, you, yeah. you are truly amazed. Yeah. Um, so if you do want to go flamingo, fifteen pounds and ninety nine pence. Really love that. Love the colours and everything. I like the frame that you've put it in. Yeah. Of course, the frame will be your choice uh, to get. But I'll just place that there. Yeah. Right. What are we looking at there? Right. Well, we have got the um, I've got the hope hair here on the linen. But just very quickly, mm. I just want to go back to the clock very okay. quickly because this is a blanket stitch by hand. So I don't want people to think, oh, I've not got a sewing machine at home I can't buy the clock because you can do it all by hand ah, right. so this is a blanket stitch by hand so I just sort of didn't mention it before but you can do it all by hand or all by machine yeah perfect okay gorgeous right so, so this is the hope hair made up of a little wall hanging oh, that's nice. so you know it's not in a frame it's the wall hanging and what I'm going to demonstrate is something called an aligned running stitch okay because aligned running stitches are where the running stitches go underneath each other so right. it features on this one and this is a hope hair not in a frame and you can see it's on the hills of the hope sorry of the 
trust hairs as well. I'm getting myself yes, confused. The trust, the trust hairs. hairs. Yes. And when you do this, it almost makes um, because of the negative space. You must get little lines on it. All but right. what some people think is you do one line at a time, so you go over and over. But actually, that makes it 20 times harder to do. Okay. And you know, we're not humans, so no stitches are going to be the same. And you've just got to accept that and go with the flow because yes. sometimes that perfection can get in the way of just sitting enjoying yourself Perfect. and honestly when you're sitting stitching and kind of in the zone it yeah. just flows and, and you let the needle do the magic for you yeah I like the idea of putting those stitches in to make the hills and the grass yes. like you say a little bit random but the effect when you finish is so satisfying yes yep so this so this here we're going to focus on for this demonstration and um, the blue is just the marking pen I've chosen to use this is oh, a water soluble okay. one but whatever sort of pen you've got test it first of all and it's yeah. fine to use so I'm going to focus on this line and the instruct on the instructions and on the pattern I've got a b c d e f g and h so it's really clear the instructions as to which bit you're doing the whole way along so I'm just sort of focusing on this this band here because this is the um, aligned running stitch and I put in already one line of stitches okay, okay? and I'm right-handed so I tend to stitch right to left left-handed probably go the other way it works yeah, fine um, and again, for anybody who's an embroiderer thinking, can you do this in a hoop? You can. Yes. As long as it's not tight like a drum. So, yeah. you know, some people are used to stitching in a hoop. You can pop this in a hoop. It doesn't matter. So I put in one row here and now I'm stitching underneath and I'm going to go underneath all my stitches. Okay. And because I'm going into linen, linen can be slubby by its very nature of how it's woven. And it's lovely to stitch into because it's a more open weave than cotton, so you get that beautiful texture. And what I'm going to do, so I've gone one way, and I'm just going to roughly-ish go underneath. And here, I'll show you, again, because I do a lot of it, and if people have bought my kits before, you can see here that I've actually picked up four stitches. So I've got one stitch here where the thread comes out and then you can see the needle coming through the fabric with three little gaps. Can you see before the point comes out? There you yes. go. So it's like the fabric has been almost concertinaed on the needle. Got and that, So now I pull that through, I've pulled through four stitches. Okay. Now it doesn't matter if you're a beginner, you might just do one stitch, pull it through and then come up and do another stitch. That's equally fine. It's a little slower, it doesn't matter. Both will work. So it, this is why it's suitable for so many people. So you just keep going up and down like that. And because you're on a curve as well, where the curve falls and where there might be a slubby bit of linen, yes. you know, I just can't stress. You get the effect no yes. matter what. Yes. So. Um, I once at a workshop had some people and I felt, well I, I was a teacher, but I felt like I'd gone back into teaching children mode because I could sense they were getting very stressed and they had a laser and they were measuring my stitch and their stitches and if their stitches weren't the same as mine they were pulling them out and it's all about just I sitting. I, I think I would have done that, you know, to begin because I would have been so worried thinking yeah. I've got to get them the right size. Yes, and yeah. I've, I've actually, you, you're right, I've actually done that, I've stitched and then I've gone, oh, oh, I don't know, they're not the right size. And then I've, I've actually unpicked them yeah. and done them again. But you don't have to do you that, don't do you? don't have to do that. I mean, some people, um, everybody's different. Some mm. people will only accept that, and that's fine. But generally, if you just go with the flow, it works. Yeah. And then you can just, you know, keep just passing the needle along. But with this aligned running stitch, you really need to go all the way along, all the way back, all the way along, all the way back. Does it matter if you run out of thread halfway, or would you suggest putting enough thread on there to go one way no, and then to come you back? You can stop because you're going underneath all of your stitches. Oh. So it doesn't matter at all. Perfect. And sometimes with your canther work, if you're thinking, oh, do I put in a stitch or not? I'd say not and try it, try it afterwards. Oh. And probably nine times out of ten, you don't need it. So, is that as if you think you've missed somewhere? Yeah, exactly. Oh. If you think the gap is too big, yes. leave it and then just try. Because sometimes that gap just disappears, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah, it does. And what I love about cancer work is that everybody's stitch size is almost like their signature. Because if you do a lot of hand sewing, it just naturally becomes smaller. Mm. If you don't do much, it's bigger. And it's all about you. 
and if you're lucky enough to see any older examples of camphor work sometimes you can see where it's been stitched by four different people because you've got four different stitch sizes do you know what would be interesting if this is your first time at camphor stitch away stitch away and then maybe in a month's time stitch away stitch away and put the two together and see maybe how your stitches start larger and then get yes, smaller. Yeah. They might not. You yeah. might stay with a larger stitch all the way through and your friend might have a smaller stitch or vice versa. Yeah. But it'd be interesting to see your progress and your development mm. through it. Yeah, it's it would. And, you know, when, when I go out and teach this to groups, I say there's one rule and people kind of look a bit worried and go, and I sort of say, you know, the rule is don't look at anybody else's stitches. Use your own stitches because they're personal to you. Oh. I need to come to one of your classes and I'd probably break every rule and you'd be like... <laughs> there aren't any rules. There aren't any rules. But yeah, yeah. that is true. That, again, that's what I'd, I'd be looking... Oh, how are you doing yours? But that's the nice thing about Cantha. It's your stitching. It's your signature as well. Yes, yeah. And that is a really, really good point. Exactly. Uh, we are busy throughout mm. all the different products. The, all the starter kit with limited stock. Mm. We'll show you this on a picture. The starter kit... Limited stock for that. Oh, yeah. goodness. Yeah. Uh, it's a great stock kit as well. If you do want to grab that, pop it into your basket. 137261, £17.49. Pence. We're also limited for the India book bundle. Oh, really oh, like that with the gosh. different designs in Andrew. It's yeah. gorgeous, isn't it? Yes. Um, yeah. So we're very busy for that. We're limited stock, £15.49, pence, which is a fabulous price yeah. point. If you want to start with Cantha, if this is something brand new to you, mm -hmm. or you want to share it with a friend, get the inspiration from the kids. Yes, yeah, um, and what those um, pictures showed was they come with an organza bag. Yeah. So you can keep your product in the little organza oh, bag as well. Way. So you've got oh, somewhere lovely. to store your things as yeah. well. Yeah, I've thought of everything, you see. Um, all you need to do is think about checking out your baskets, which you have done because the starter kit's just sold out. Oh, has it? <laughs> starter kit's just sold out. Uh, so just to show you, we'll just show you a picture mm. of that so you know which one it is. That's your starter kit with your fabrics, with your threads, with the book and the organza bag. Yes. That's yep. gone. Yep. So we're teasing okay. you there by showing you that. It's gone. <laughs> uh, but the India um, starter kit is available. So check that one out. Right. Right. So that is the aligned running stitch. Okay. Um, and you can see, you know, you can do whatever you want to with them at all. Yes. Which is really good. And if I take you back to the book a minute, one design yes. we haven't looked at is actually the design on the front of the book, oh, which yes. is the um, boxing, boxing hair. hairs. Which have is, you seen um, any boxing hairs? I haven't. Have? I have on the television, but not live. Oh, you, you know when people say they've got bucket lists and they've got things they want to do yes. in life? That's one of mine. Yeah, it would I'd be like amazing. I'd actually like to photograph it, be yeah. there and say, I've seen it. And here's a photo. Yes, yeah, yeah. It would that would be, probably would be one of mine mm. as well. I've seen prancing foxes, you mm -hmm. know, when they jump up. Yes. Um, I've, I saw two on a very frosty morning. It was very misty, but fortunately I didn't have my camera. Mm. So when I went to get my camera and I came to the window, they'd gone. Yeah. So it's those opportunities. But if you ever do see that, um, uh, or you don't, if you stitch it, you've always got it there. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's such an iconic image, isn't it, of those, you know, Mad March hairs, those boxing hairs, and there are so many stories as to why they do it. Do you know any of the stories? I do. I mean, some of them are, um, it's males fighting to show the female who is the strongest yes. to be her mate. I've heard that it, it's the female boxing the male to make sure he's strong enough. So I've, I've never found out which actually is, is, is the correct one, but I, I quite I like that story. So do I. Not that I'm an advocate of, yeah. you know, that, but the story itself. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and they, they are literally, they're not hurting each other. They're literally just yeah. boxing, sparring. They're yeah. not doing it yeah. viciously or anything yeah. like that. That's a lovely story, It's isn't amazing. It? And all hairs do it, because in, in the book, as well as the sort of brown hairs we see, I've also got an arctic hair, which we've got just behind us here. Oh, yes, that arctic And the hair. arctic hair is white, obviously, because it's in the, um, it's in the snow and you yeah. can't see it. And that is designed to be pale, because arctic hairs are camouflaged. They are, yes. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, a lovely director who said, I can't actually see that. Yeah, <laughs> it is camouflaged on the quilt um, because it is in white, yeah, but, uh, which is brilliant. Yeah, but you can you can just about see it on the camera behind it. I think there you can just about see it a bit more in that wider shot, can't you? Yeah. But yeah. it's just sort of there you go. But he's, he's designed to be camouflaged. But you know you don't have to make him white. 
no, you, you could not. make him brown. Yeah. You know, the designs are there to be tweaked in the book and things like that. It's lovely. If you really, really wanted good. to camouflage, camouflage, you could put it on a white background. It would be very subtle. Yes, there. yes, it would. Yeah, yes, it really yeah. would. It's the pattern for that in the book. The pattern, full-size pattern for that is in the book, yes. Oh, let me see. So, you so can find him. Let's, I'll tell you what, let me get to the... End there you go, there he's you just go. there. So because he's through the patterns that we've got in here because there are ten projects. Ten, yeah. So when you think about it, when you think about a quilt pattern, you're looking at about eight to ten pounds for a single quilt pattern. Yes. And yeah. we've got ten in here. Wow. Okay. Because of course, yeah, you can use these patterns on quilts. You can use them on all kinds of different projects. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So that one there is for the moon gazing hair cushion, which we've got on the table with us as well, because yes, um, traditional quilt makers will know that you can have a feather wreath. Um, oh. So that motif is called a feather. Ah, so I grab the cushion. You can do, yeah. So it's a traditional motif. And I thought, do you know what? Instead of giving him a moon, let's give him a feather moon to sort of link it to quilting as well. Oh, lovely. So this is quilted with a metallic thread. And then the background here is stitched with just a 50 weight. So the thread you'd put through your sewing machine. And Isn't again, you know, full size patterns. Love that. Really, really nice. But, and, and that's the pattern in the book for that. Uh, let me just. Turn, in fact, let me just turn it this way and then I'll turn it towards you. So again, we've easier. got the three hairs on the shelf. So that's the pattern for the Arctic hair. Yep. And um, because it's big, it's over two pages, but oh. it's really easy to trace. You trace his bottom, then you trace his front. Oh, I <laughs> love <laughs> oh, no. And what's that bit there? And that is the underneath the hair. It's called. Oh, um, yeah. It'd be like the snow. Like it is just... like the snow. Yeah, clamshells, like, that's it. Clamshells, so it's yeah. a traditional technique. So I thought, well, let's put something of that in. So we're mixing up the techniques as well yeah, in that's there. that's nice. But, you know, again, people are so creative. They don't have to do what I've done. You can put the hair and put him on a log cabin block. Yeah. You could just do hand stitching on the bottom of him. You could do that in count the work if you wanted to. Yes, yeah, good and, idea, yeah. actually. Yeah. Uh, we've got... I turn it that way. There yep. you go. So they're the elements from the um, Hair and the Tortoise whole cloth quilt that yeah. we've seen on the table and again you know the instructions have got how you lay these out yes perfect and these are all full size by the way yes. because you know you thought it sometimes is an issue to take things out and enlarge them yeah these are all full size yeah. um, even the text so, yes yeah, so you can see with the text there's no enlarging at all in this no perfect so you could mix and match the elements if you wanted to as well because it's all full size yeah it certainly is let me just turn that so that's the hair for the needle case and the wool penny rug that we've looked at. It's lovely. Let me grab that needle case book. That is beautiful. See that? On that. And again, the text is that. there as well on that. The right way. Oh, yeah, that is the right way. There you go. And you've got your needle book there. Because yeah. it's in a double. There you go. So they're looking at each other. Oh, that is lovely. It's a and fantastic book and we've, it's proven to be very busy. It's a TV exclusive, isn't it? It is, yes, yeah. yeah. And the two designs we haven't looked at from the book is there's a stargazing hair, which is just above the um, oh, Arctic yes. hair. There you go. There you go. So that one is for the book. I think it's more towards the end. But there's a, there is a star constellation. Oh, is that? Oh, I'm going to find that. Um, so in the book, the, the pattern is for the star constellation. It was just after that, I think. Oh, there you go. That one there. That one there, yes. Yeah. So that is a proper star constellation. And I use, I found oh. some tiny star sequins. So where the dots are, I put some tiny star sequins. So that's just over our shoulder. I don't know if the camera can zoom in on it. It's in the oh, frame, yeah, just, in the above frame just above there. That. Is, that, is that an actual star constellation? It is, yes. Do yeah. you know which constellation it's called it is? called Lepus. Is it? Yeah. And it is known as the hare. Or yes. the rabbit. So you can almost make out the sort of ears at the front. Yes. And then the two yes. legs and kind of the tail. Okay. So oh, it's an I'm actual gonna... proper constellation. I'm going to search for that in the night nice sky now. Yeah. That, isn't that, you see, every day you learn something new. Leapers, I love it. And what a lovely touch as well. What great research. Yeah, because I, I just saw those little star secrets and I thought they'll work perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Uh, it's all in the book. Yeah. It's all in the book, those patterns. £15.99, 127351 is the item number if you want to go for that. And you can make and create some fabulous designs. Remember, we've got the starter kit just on the show. I say just. Oh, both. Oh, the starter kit sold out. We've got the India kit that is available on the show. You can head to the website and find those. Uh, we've still got a bit of time left on the show. Only three minutes. So three minutes. Right. Yes, right. this is a quickie three-minute one. So we looked at the little wool penny rug, didn't we? Yes. That has these pennies that traditionally were just chopped down pennies. And these use a blanket stitch. 
and you know I've cut them out I've clipped them together and the blanket stitch is the one I use for the clock as well to go around the moon right. so I'll just see if we can do this very very quickly and the blanket stitch again is a lovely hand stitch you could do this by machine but it's very fiddly so yeah. um, and I like doing these because they're almost like sweeties because again you can put them in a tin and just keep doing the same yeah. stitch so the blanket stitch just quickly there's a smaller one in the center and there's a big one around the outside the common size is about an inch because that was the size of an old penny so with the blanket stitch you're literally going round the circle so you're going to go in and you're going to come out like so and then I don't know if you can see but the thread I'm trying to do this so quickly the thread goes behind the needle so if I just hold it like that All right. so when you pull it out and I've just caught the felt now I'm not trying to do this quickly oh, no, don't. What is it when you try and do things quickly? Uh, less haste. Less haste, more speed, because I'm going to have to re-thread this. So while I'm re-threading this, the tip I was going to give was when you're stitching around a circle or anything curved, you probably need to do slightly smaller stitches to maintain that curved line. Because if you do big stitches, yeah. you're going to sort of almost make it into an octagon or, or yeah. your stitches are going to square off that yeah, circle. True. So there we go, I'm back in now. So, and again, you can either swing it up like I did or you can go all the way down and all the way back up. And once you've gone down like that, you can really clearly see where the needle needs to be. Pull it out with a needle round it and just go all the way round like this. And again, you know, if you have all these prepared in a nice little tin yeah. or something like that with the thread, you can just sit and do these. Perfect. And well, I, I don't know where the hour goes. I know we've had a lot of chat in the show, but it's nice to talk about your products yeah. and, and the stories behind them. Um, Angela, it's always a pleasure to work with you. It Thank really you. is. Um, have you got another show today? Um, no, I haven't. This is right. the only one. Well, check out your baskets. You can watch the show again on Rewind. Hopefully, we're going to see you very, very soon. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much for watching. Please do check out your baskets, though, because we have been exceptionally busy uh, for that book. Thank you, yeah. Angela. Thank you. It has gone so quickly. It really has. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Uh, Buttons with Gina B Silkworks is up next. Hot wax and cold gel. Sounds interesting, and it will be. And then there's John next door, one day special. Wakey wakey, rise and shine. Welcome to Good Morning Ho Chanda. Your daily breakfast fix of your favourite crafts at 7am. Whilst you're getting ready to start the day, join us every morning for the deal of the day. A product available at a special price but only for 24 hours or while stocks last. Part of your morning routine should also be the sunrise specials. Your favourite crafting items available at a special low price but only for the hour. Tune in to Good Morning Ho Chanda and start your day with a deal. Hi, I'm John Lockwood from John Next Door. I'm lucky enough to have been a guest on Hachanda since day one. I like to pack my shows with lots of hints, tips and techniques. And my idea is to give the experience that I've got and I've gained to everyone at home and show as many things as I possibly can. The John Next Door brand is designed to bring high quality, innovative products to the crafting market. The range includes stamps, dies and new products such as the media plates. I'm also looking to expand the brand and bring you lots of new techniques, new ideas and new products into the next few years. I hope you can join me on my crafting journey and learn some tips and techniques from me that I share with you. So don't forget to tune in and watch the John Next Door shows on Hachanda. I'm Hayley, and you might have seen me presenting here at Hachanda. Well, I've always been an avid crafter behind the scenes and have been given the opportunity to share some of my favourite products with you in a monthly show called Handmade by Hayley. So I hope you'll join me, let me inspire you, and maybe you will discover a new craft in the process. Hi. 
Hey, I'm Joe from The Mill Shop Online. Welcome to The Mill Shop Online. As you can see, we're a lot of fabric here. We're very passionate about our fabrics. We're one of the largest online sellers in the UK of fabrics for upholstery, soft furnishings, and now the lovely craft market. Whether you're starting out with fabric or you're an experienced sewer, we love to bring projects that every ability can really have a go at. So don't miss The Mill Shop Online shows on Hochanda. Hello there, very good. Uh, oh, still morning, it's 11 o'clock, isn't just, it? Just, yeah, thinking? just morning. Is it 5 o'clock 11 o'clock? <laughs> Lovely Gina B's with us, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. We're just saying it's been a long time since we worked together. Yeah, yeah, very long time. A few time. years. <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> now, what we've got for you in this show, I'm looking forward to this actually, I love anything like this, button making. Now, you might think, button making? Why do I need to make buttons? These are miniature works of art, they really, really are. Absolutely. And what I love is the history behind them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you said to me just before we started the show that you actually get commissioned by museums sometimes and yes, sometimes film exactly. companies yeah, to yeah. make yeah. buttons. That's right, to, to do reproduction buttons of um, particular ones for costumiers, for museums, well the costumiers use them for all sorts, but yeah, for historical costume basically. Um, that's. That's one of the big things that I'm known for is the buttons. Well, maybe it's something <laughs> you're interested in starting and, and, and getting into because we've got a brand new set today. We did do a show back in January that proved really popular. This set, though, wasn't on that show. It's brand new. Now, my, my producer, Ross, is going to say, I'm going to call it the new set because <laughs> I mean, I said to Jean when I came in, how do you, how do you say that? it? It's one knop buttons. It's one knop. Okay, basically it literally translates as, as like a thread button. Right. Okay. Um, a lot of people confuse these with dorset buttons. Okay. Because they're made on a ring. But the technique is entirely different to okay. the dorset button making technique. So if you are sort of getting, um, you know, you really want to get down about the differences in the buttons, these are made differently. And they, they tend to be from sort of Germany, Austria, Czechoslovakia, Northern Europe, really. My um, word, they are amazing. And had, um, they did actually come into real prominence when the Dorset industry died because they're a bit quicker to make the plain ones right. than the Dorset buttons. And do you keep the metal ring in them? Yes, you yeah. keep the metal ring in them. Um, these, this kit uh, comes with aluminium rings, mm -hmm. so they're you know really durable. But you'll notice it's also a flat-faced ring, yeah. uh, whereas the Dorset ones are a rounded ring. So that also changes the appearance of the button itself. We're well, actually so. going to get 12 rings, um, six large and six of the smaller ones, mm -hmm. plus a needle and the thread in blue and white. Well, the thread colours may vary a oh, bit, okay. but you will get a dark and a light, okay. definitely. And then you also get your cotton, which is what you've made the, uh, we're calling this like a sampler, because a lot of people people choose to display these, put them maybe in frames or put them in a sampler like this or indeed I suppose if you wanted to wear them and put them on garments you could do that yes, too. Yes, exactly, which is the necklace that I am wearing, um, Anne made for me and this is all of the patterns that are in this Warren Knopf kit, she's just added more colours so than just doing two don't colors. just think of buttons as fastenings, think no, of them as decoration. absolutely not, absolutely not. They can be used for so many different things. The passamentary buttons, which is what these are. The buttons made with um, thread techniques, um, some fabric, but they're decorative, is basically the, the different types of buttons that I bring. Full instructions are included. Yes. Is it easy to do or is it something that needs it a little bit It is easy to do. It's about technique. Right. Most of the button making, you can get complex ones, there's a couple of complex designs, but the basic patterns, the the basic technique is simple. You just have to get used and to it. And I presume it. you can use your own coloured threads if you oh, want to. Oh, absolutely, yep. absolutely. Um, that's part of the joy of it, is to, to look at how you can change and make other designs. We supply enough so that you can get started, you can try out the patterns, and see where you're going from well, there. 10% already gone <laughs> right from the very start. So a lot of you thinking, that's what I've been looking for. I want something new. That is brand new to us, not been on air before. And you do get two threads. The colors will vary, but you'll get a light and a dark, and they're DMC threads. Yeah, they? they're DMC. Yeah. What you get with the Zorin Knopf is a perle cotton, right. which is a, a tightly twist cotton, not this stranded cotton embroidery. The stranded cotton you get with the Dorset and the Macclesfield and Leek. Okay, well, if I'm being true to my roots, the Dorset one is what I go for, because yeah. that's where I'm from. So <laughs> Have huge industry there originally. Was it? Huge industry. I didn't yeah. realise. Yeah. Um, Dating back to what sort of? At least about 1630. 
Wow. Yeah. So it, it it really kept a lot of people in. It well, the thing was, the Dorset industry didn't pay money. It paid in goods. Oh. So they did piecework. They made the buttons, but they had to take them to a central place, and then they got goods. So when the industry went down, because they invented machines to make um, cloth buttons. Right. The, the people who made them didn't actually have any savings or anything because they'd only ever been paid in goods. Right, you I see. understand. So okay. it was it was a serious crash. Well, I'm I'm intrigued. I want to go and um, look up now. And yeah, look, you'll you'll, you'll, you'll go bit. down a rabbit hole, Dave. Bet, you I really will. will. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, you're going to get your. We're calling this a sampler, but it's like a little um, a little cotton book that you yeah, can of course decorate. Journal. Yeah, button journal, which is a lovely thing to do and a lovely thing to keep, and it's a wonderful way of kind of showing off your skill and your newfound craft and hobby. Uh, but having said that, if you want to use them again practically, you can do that. So these are the brass rings, rounded rings, yep, and you get the cotton and that's you also right. get the thread as and well. And you, you get two colours of thread, you also get a needle, you do get a needle with all of these as well. So you've got your instructions, yep. <coughs> you'll find that what the way that they're all laid out is you get the sort of basic instructions in that the explanation of stitches and so on in the main piece, but then each one comes with a pattern piece, Great. which is what are all the different buttons. Now you've actually got 14 rings in total. Yeah. Four of them are the plastic and then the 10 are the brass. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the Dorset one. If you want to really kind of go back into history, uh, well both of them would be great and so would this one as well. This is the Macclesfield and Leak yes. design. So the Macclesfield and Leak buttons were traditionally um, silk or mohair okay. and they're wrapped over a wooden form traditionally and were not washed, they were on coats, they were on outer garments. Well, do bear in mind that because they're on a wood uh, circle that they can't be washed, no, so no. don't put them on anything that's going to go in the washing machine, otherwise you'll ruin them. No, no, you're just better to um, actually put them over an acrylic disc if right. that's really what you want to do. But look at the detail in them, it's phenomenal isn't it? The different directions the threads go in, that crisscross, have they, they all got names? Or? Yes, yes, with with the um, Macclesfield and Lee, well with all of them, some of them are traditional names, some of them I've just given them a name, right. because there's so many patterns out there we don't know all of the names, but for instance, the that is a death's head. Right. That's a famous design, the Death's Head Wrap, and I always start, if you're doing Macclesfield and Leek, start with the Death's Head. Okay. It's the easiest one, and it's the foundation for all, all of the other wrapping techniques. Well, in here, you're going to get three skeins of thread, yeah. again, DMC. Uh, you're going to get your cotton book, and then you get 14 buttons here from uh, the wood. So do bear in mind, again, they're not suitable for washing, and you get your needle as yeah. well, and instructions. Yeah, that's so, right. Okay, well, 15% of that's gone as well. Are they all as kind of famous as each other, would you say? Or is Dorset um, the one that's out there? Dorset buttons are pretty famous. A lot of knitters and crocheters have learnt how to make at least one Dorset button. Right. Um, so with regards to Great Britain, they're quite famous. Um, if you are slightly into history, a lot of people know what the Death Head is. So mm -hmm. that goes into sort of that realms because that was a really popular... 18th century was the height of that industry. Okay, more to come. It's, it's difficult. So we want to find out as much about each one, but we want to get through <laughs> everything as well. Uh, this next one is the Yorkshire, Yorkshire. the Yorkshire button. Okay, kit. Yorkshire buttons um, are, with regards to traditional buttons, a little bit of an, an anomaly in that we don't really know where they've come from. They seem to have appeared sometime in the 1980s. Oh, that, that, uh, yeah, that, 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 that recent, well, that late, yeah. yeah. And basically, they're a dorset button made on a loom so that you can take it off of the loom and stuff it with something so that you can make a ball type button. Right, got So you. you're not making it on the ring. So these are reusable again and again and again. Again and again and again. The interesting thing is, is that a couple of the patterns you do see from the 16th century. Right. We don't know how they were made. They may well have been made on little looms, mm. but they're the same sort of design. But look, the potential for this, because you're, it's not a disposable, you're using the templates over and over and over. Yeah. You can make these little gorgeous lightweight earrings. Um, obviously these could be uh, fixings and fasteners for all sorts of They're little really bags nice, yeah, having. for bags and things. They're also really nice for sort of knitted garments because they're soft a lot of people like them for like um, if they're doing kids things and stuff like that as well because they're soft buttons and you get three skeins of the DMC thread as well again That's colors right. will vary or um, yeah we say colors will vary primarily because if we want you know we're packing the kits and DMC haven't got all of them 
with them, but we do try to stick to a colour range. Okay. And you'll get a nice mixture, whatever But you happens. will you will get a really nice mixture. Okay, now, if you're thinking, all right, I'm not very good with my fingers and my hands, I like the idea of doing this, but I probably need a kit to kind of give me a bit of a helping hand. That's what this is all about. It's like a second pair of hands, this kit. Comes really nicely packaged in a tin box as well, uh, but this is... So the, tin is, the, the tin is quite handy as well because this is the third hand. This right. is the big thing. It's a clip. Okay, so when you're working on a button, you can just clip it. Right. Okay, so you think, yeah, okay, but I'm still holding on to that. That's why you want the tin. Right. Because gotcha. it's magnetic. So, and also anyone who may have um, purchased our total trimmings table, um, uh, on our knotting show. The hole in the total trimming table has a steel disc that that also can pop into ah, and great. fits it so that you can use it on your, your total trimming table. And what other things have you got in the kit? So what there? you've got is you've got some um, little spools so you can take thread with you. You've got button pins. Now I don't know if, if the cameras can pick it up. It's got a little lump. Yeah, we can see that. And it also doesn't have, um, as a usual um, safety pin, has a little loop at the other side. And that doesn't have it. It's a plain piece of wire. Mm -hmm. And that's so that you basically pin a button on from the back of the garment. So you sort of bring it around. There's a little instruction th sheet in it. You bring it around so that the loop sticks out, and that's what your button's on on the right side. Mm -hmm. Pins on the back. So if you're doing any of the buttons that can't be washed, you can take them back off and wash your garment and put it back on again. Gotcha. So that's your button pins. And there's a little pin cushion, is that? Yes, yeah, a little felt ball to act as a pin cushion because obviously you're going to keep this in your handbag at all the time. Um, a bit of beeswax. Yeah. Um, a couple of straight pins, which are required for different button making techniques. A needle and then a tapestry needle, again, for different types of button making techniques. Okay. You've also got the button measure, which also gives you traditional button uh, measurements at the side, which are lines. Brilliant. Well, that's only four. Uh, sorry, twelve ninety nine actually. Twelve ninety nine if you'd like that. One two one three six zero. None of these are, are expensive. So if you want to get started, probably mm. go for a tool kit in one of the. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if and if you're really on a budget, <coughs> go for one of the complete kits. Okay. Now next, let's move along down to our circle gauge set that's just yeah. here. Now these are actually um, two parts because yes. you've actually got the positive and the negative. Tell us about these. Jane. Okay, so basically these have been marked out with notches for divisions. Right. So if you're making, for instance, a death's head button, you will need to quarter the button mold. Now, you may want, wish to do this by eye, but you want to be more accurate if you're making sets. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, you can place the relevant one either above or place your button on top of it or put it inside of it so that you can mark off your divisions. Gotcha. And I'll show you how, how we're using it on a ring. Um, and it's particularly good when you get into the, the sort of, especially the odds, because if you want five divisions, how in the world do you do five divisions mm. evenly on a little thing? That's where the odds come in really handy. So you've got the odds and the evens. Yeah, right. but you can use that as well. If you're doing embroidery, mark off your divisions and do your lazy daisy stitch for your flower perfectly evenly. Um, if you're doing kansashi, which we bring sometimes, you can place petals mm -hmm. neatly. So it, it's got a lot more uses so than it's a just positioner. button. That's right, yeah, right. so that you can mark out the gauges because you, you'll center that up and then you'll be able to mark off your points and Great. the ones that we want. Good. Now, uh, another thing that you may well find really um, a godsend to have, this is Gina's book that's been out for, when did it come out? Oh, it's been out a little while now. Right. Yeah, I've got a new one coming out in, we're launching it here in June. At okay, the end of June. great. But if you so, are, are looking at this hobby and are looking at this craft thinking, do you know what, I really fancy getting into this. This is a great book that will show you all sorts of tips and techniques. All sorts of, all sorts of different buttons, not just these. You've got crochet, you've got lace, you've got knotted buttons, you've got a little bit of everything to really just get you started making buttons. And there's some complex designs in there. There's um, some simple designs, all sorts, all there's sorts a, there's of There's buttons. over a hundred designs to get your teeth yeah. into here, which is exciting. If you're looking at this thing, and I never even realised that we could do that. you could like do that this. many buttons. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, there it is. And uh, look out for the new <laughs> one coming. And there's even more. Yeah, in end June. of June. Okay. Yeah, we're going to launch it here exclusively. We'll get that so. today. It's only 19.99, and then look out for the new one coming in a month or two's time. And that won't be a repeat. It'll be... Uh, in oh, addition to the, it's it's a completely different um, book altogether. Fabric buttons right. in June. Brilliant. So. Now, what about 
Now, this is going to appeal to those of you that love the buttons, but also those of you that maybe aren't really thinking along the button line, because yeah. shadow boxes, everyone loves. These are more shadow plaques than shadow boxes, so that they're slightly shallower, but they're a perfect way of displaying the buttons that you've um, put together and you've created, because they are miniature works of art. Yeah, they are, actually, and I think that is the one thing that a lot of people really like, is that you can sit down, you can make a button, it is a work of art. You have completed something. It's not one of these big projects, you know, that, that takes you, you have to sit down and work on it for the next month. You've, you've done it. You've done one little button. You're proud of it. I think it's a, bit like, it. it's a bit like parchment because it's got such a history and you're keeping it that's alive. That's right, yeah. yeah. I think that's what a lot of you maybe are interested in. And then like you the go idea. off on your own tangents as well, you see, because I think once you start making them, you then really enjoy experimenting. Now, the stock on this, we don't have as many of these as we'd like. 40% mm. has already gone. You've also got the positive and the negative parts to it yes, too, Yes, yes, because you can use those to build up height. You use them for your other mixed media as well. I mean, I, I like them to, to add height to the different pieces and, and bring out parts when I'm using them. But I mean, they, they just work great as little tags and things yeah, like that absolutely. as well. So well, yes. This is going to sell out any minute. 9.99 new today if you would like those, 247891. And if you like those, the chances are you're going to like these as the well. Difference. Because these are slightly smaller, but the same sort of concept. They That's are right. uh, the shadow plaques, but you're going to get a square. Actually, you're going to get two squares. Two squares and two circles. And two circles, but yeah. slightly different size apertures on them. Yes, yeah, different combinations. And again, you've got all these other extras. All of the negatives. bits, which is, again, you see, that's where you, you can add the height and yeah. change what you're bringing very nice yeah just by building them up okay well all four of those plus the extras uh, for 999-978-810 you write a number ah we've done the counter in about 15 minutes that's not bad <laughs> okay let's have a look, look at the website because there was a lot to get in yeah. here are all the kits that you can go for there we are look you can see everything at hachanda.com why not make buttons for a, maybe you've got a special outfit maybe you're getting married or you've got a waistcoat and you're the uh, bridegroom or whatever or, or you're thinking along those lines that you want to have something that's not just mass-produced plastic buttons on it that's got something that's got history uh, you can color coordinate as well you know these are little treasures that you can wear buttons don't just do a job they're decorative too and exactly I mean so many people <coughs> actually buy plastic buttons to embellish yeah. their work with why not also make the button something special? And I think mm. that's what a lot of people actually do use them for. Now, the new kit, remember, say, say that name again. Zvernop. Zvernop. <laughs> the third of that stock has now gone £14.99. And, and of... that's hoping I've said it correctly <laughs> myself, not being German. <laughs> and these are, well, German, Austria, that sort of thing. Yes, area yeah. Europe. Northern Europe is tended to use this technique. Right. To, to make the buttons. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you marking off. Um, with this particular ring, it does fit mm -hmm. in the um, aperture that I need to make the divisions that I want for this. But if they don't, you can always use a different size above and use a pencil. You can use a much smaller one, put it inside and mark. So you can pretty much figure out where you're making your marks on all of them depending mm -hmm. on the size which is why we've got the different sizes the odds have a notch but they also have a half so like that's five if you count the notches but if you count the halves then it's ten right um, that so that just opens it up a little bit more because with some of the wrapping techniques you'll want five but you'll need to wrap ten so I won't confuse you with that mm -hmm. at the moment so I'm gonna do is we're not button so I'm just gonna make a little mark And I'm using a felt tip just so that you guys can see so on normally camera. Use what a pencil, you? I would usually keep it as light as possible, um, but definitely use something permanent so that you don't mess up your ah, um, okay. your threads. So we don't need that. Just give that a little dry. Now, first thing I'm going to do is a dark thread. I'm not taking it off of the spool. Mm -hmm. So if you have the Zwernop kit, the first thing that you need to do is take those skeins and wind it into a ball or onto a spool or, a, um, you know, a thread tidy. Um, simply because you will use it, most of it, direct from it, and right. that saves you a lot of thread. I'm going to hold the thread towards, at the back, I'm just going to hold it steady, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the instructions say, lay 10 for 20, okay? So basically, I'm going to lay 10 wraps. A wrap is from the bottom to the top, 
across the face of the ring. 20 is the number of spokes. Mm -hmm. So spokes are counted from the center out. Okay, and that is all explained in the instructions. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so and I then say that I want it to be two ends. So two ends is two threads laid side by side. So one, and you wrap and then rotate anti clockwise. Two. Mm -hmm. You think being, it being a metal that it would slip, but it seems to kind of... With the flat, it doesn't. Right. Okay. But with the rings, it often can, the rounded ones. You've got beeswax in the tin. Rub a bit of beeswax on it. It'll act a little bit tacky uh, and right. just help to stop the threads so from slipping. I thought slipping. the wax would make it slipperer. Ah, uh, no, because it's beeswax. It's not a silicone. It actually gets tacky when uh, it gets warm, right. and you can warm it up and get it a bit tacky, and you can press the threads into it, and right. it's it's really helpful. So that's um, sorry, I just realised I'm going to have to do a few more because that's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah that would only be 10. So because I've marked out for five, the five division and the 10 all the way around, but I want 10 wraps, I need to do one in the middle, okay? Okay. And that's all you have to do. And that's why the gauges come in so handy because you don't have to measure this, the sensor again. You can keep increasing for gauges that you don't have. Right. But it helps keep everything in line. So that's three, four, I feel like it's quite Five. relaxing, isn't it? It is very. Six. Seven. And presumably they're kind of standard size Eight. for buttons, are they? Um, or they vary? They vary, really. Um, a lot of the traditional sworn knob and dorset buttons are teeny, teeny, teeny tiny because they're shirt buttons. Mm -hmm. There are buttons that we would not normally make. We like to make them big and bold and bright. I mean, these should be in white, period, right. to be really traditional. So, that like is our first of load a, of spokes. Spokes of a bicycle wheel. That's right. Mm. So we're going to, now you see I'm holding this here. So instead of holding it and letting everything come undone, I'm going to use that. So I can cut off a little length and thread my needle and my thread isn't slipping off of there, which is the brilliance of the third hand. But just hold that steady while I take it off. Now the toolkit turn the it around. and the uh, the extra hand, that's proven to be quite popular. A third of the stock has gone now at just twelve ninety nine, and that's not much to pay for something that you'll use again and again and again. Yeah, that's it. And if <laughs> if you open mine you'll see how much stuff it's full of as well because I do use it and <laughs> carry it around. So I've just knotted that off and you'll see that starter thread. That's caught up in there as well, so I didn't even need to tie that to the, the ring. Okay. It's all caught up in there. Okay, so now we'll go to our light thread. It always goes light, dark, does it? Um, dark, no, it could go dark, light, it could go tonal. It, it's entirely up to you, but in the instructions, because I'm giving two colors of thread and it, one will be dark, one will be light, then I'm just giving you an idea, you know, use the dark thread, use the light thread so that you get a contrast. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to turn around to the back. You've noticed I've threaded the needle and I'm just going to now pop a knot in that, trim that tail and then bring that forward just so that that's anchored. Okay, okay? Yep. now I'm going to pick a spoke, any spoke and I'm going to wrap. Now here's where the counting comes in and this is the, the point of the Zorn knob, okay? So I'm going to pick this spoke and then for this design it says lay one end skipping seven spokes. Alright, All right. Yep. so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's what I want to skip, okay? So if you look it's on the, the diagram as well. Mm. One, two, three, just four, five, up. six, seven. I'll just show you. This is what you're working from. So that's basically what Gina's just done. So you've got the written so, illustration and then it shows you with a picture and to back it's, it up. That's it. So it's a, it's a shorthand method which is all explained for the, the text, mm, right. but it's very straightforward. So we've laid one wrap. 
Now we rotate anti-clockwise and we do it again. And we do it again. Ah, and we do it again. You. And this is where you're starting to get that spiral pattern right. come up. And you can see this is working up quite quickly. Just nudge that a little bit off center. And then you'll come to the point where you start so that you'll have two on each of those dark spokes. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want. So you have to keep going all of the way around until you have two on each of them. Do you do this in front of the TV of an yes. evening? Or do you do? Yes. You don't have to have silence to concentrate to count. No, them. not at all. I chat all the time. I make buttons all of the time. It's you don't want to see the table next to my <laughs> armchair. So many bits of thread. You'd think I had another uh, multicolored dog, <laughs> not just <laughs> my Jack Russell. Oh, honestly, it's something that got, drives has, my has husband crazy. he got one of your buttons on his jacket? Right. <laughs> he, um, he had a woven collar okay. made from this morning's show, that's for sure. And then I'm just going to fasten that off at the back again, a little knot just to secure it. So we're getting there. We've yeah. got something pretty so cool. Yeah. Okay. And now you do the filling. Now the filling part, we do need to have a length of thread. You don't want it too long, but an arm's length is, tends to be what I work to. And then if you need to add more, you can. Um, just move that out of the way. So we thread the needle. If someone's looking for the easiest buttons, to, if they're starting out and they're a real novice and they're thinking, oh, I don't know if I could do this, which of the, the sets would you recommend? <laughs> um, mm. A lot of people like dorset buttons as a start off. I personally found the Macclesfield and Lake the easiest, okay. but that was just me. Um, so really it depends i mean if you've done any needlework dorset buttons you'll probably enjoy right um because you'll understand the principle of it sort well, of thing ross our producer just said the dorset is very very popular but yeah. so is this one as well because this is brand new but a third of the stock of the dorset collection has got Dor dorset sets gone right so now all we need to do is add some blanket stitches in between each of these spokes to fill the ring okay oh, so right. we come up how many did I say to do? I've said to do three. Okay. And that's so that we get a nice tight filling. Now, as you're working them, you can move your spokes a little bit if they end up that they're too close. Mm -hmm. and when you get to an intersection, it will depend on the design, which you're told to do. But on this one, you're told to do a back stitch over four. So the four being the two dark and the two light mm -hmm. at the intersection. So we'll do a back stitch over that. Now what that's going to do is that's going to anchor those spokes so they're not going to move. Right. Then we go back to our blanket stitch. Three of those. And blanket stitch has a ridge. and. I'm pulling down. I, I do it almost without thinking, but I'm pulling down so that that ridge goes to the back mm -hmm. of these flat buttons. So that's quite important with a Zorn knob. Um, a dorset button, you cover the whole ring with, a blank, with blanket stitches first. Right. And then you turn the ridge to the back and then you lay spokes. So it's a little bit more time consuming because you're covering every single bit of the ring, whereas mm -hmm. this. You're just filling in the gaps. You're just filling in the gaps. It's all right, I didn't do my back stitch. So just undo that before I go. Did you realize that there stitch. was actually a craft life? It's, I mean, obviously, decorative buttons, are, are, we, we know they've been around for a long time, but to actually be able to do this in you know modern day times and to find kits that allow you to do something that in many cases is centuries old. Yeah. And I've been a Dorset born and bred person all my life. I didn't realize that they had such <laughs> a heritage in buttons. I didn't realize huge, it. huge heritage. Really, really huge heritage. Um, whereabouts are you? Um, I'm from Bournemouth. Right. But that uh, used to be Hampshire, so... Yeah, Blandford. Um, Todd Huddle, that way. That sort of area is yeah. where the, the um, big Dorset industry was. Originally, as I understand it, um, a lot of farmers' wives 
um, worked the buttons. Mm. Um, so it was, a, it was extra money for agricultural workers, basically, as I understand it. And the original Dorset buttons were not on rings. The right. very old Dorset buttons were not on rings. They That came later. The ones on rings came about, about 17, 20, 17, 30. I'm just showing you here some of the beautiful things that Jean has brought in for the show today to show you. that you don't I have a terrific design team and Chris and Gillian have just they they go mad but it's it is the point that you can do yeah so many different things I mean, think with of them as mini brooches if you want to um, you know their jewelry their adornments for little boxes jewelry boxes trinket boxes I love the samplers that you can make from the kits that's a lovely idea yeah and and of course you can cut up the the fabrics and do the use them in different types of mixed media obviously you don't have to use to make just the journals mm. um, but it's there in case that's that's what you want to do to keep your first ones. A lot of people do want, you know, I do courses and so on, and a lot of my students want to keep their first buttons. You mm. know, even if they've got mistakes, they're proud of them because yeah. it's and it's also a learning process. And to be fair, something like this, you could do the first one and leave it like that, mm. and then you can understand looking back at it without reading the instructions. Ah, oh, right, okay, that's how it was made. And put that in, it's only a, halfway created. It's a bit like saying to like Matthew Palmer, one of our guests who comes in and does painting, you know, you could say to him, have you still got the first painting you ever did? I bet the answer is yes. He probably, if he doesn't have it, he'll know exactly what Where the subject is. was. Yeah. You know, even if, if he doesn't actually have it, I'll bet. No, I can't bear to throw away some of the really early ones that, um, I've buttons that I've made and they're I wouldn't show them to anyone now I mean, I'd, I'd be tempted, <laughs> if, if I got into this I'd be tempted to actually have you know like you you love your crafting journals and your scrapbooks and things like that why not have a journal of buttons yeah that's what I have Is I it? have lots of, of journals with buttons um, there you want to display them they're they are like any other button, and buttons are really very addictive, to be honest. Um, you know, there are button collectors all over the world. Mm. And because there's something quite, I don't know what it is, there's something about these little things that are little works of art. And my thread's getting a bit short. So, just to show you, if that ever happens, just take it down to the center and knot it, and then you can add another thread. And that's also how you can change the colors. Right. So, I mean, I could even do that now, this last bit, in a different color, just to make another button entirely. Can I just hold that to yeah. the camera? Just, this still needs to be finished up the top here, but look at that. And that was done live on TV in literally it, half it an hour. It really isn't that long to do. Not long at all. Isn't that amazing? Who would have thought that that would have been achievable, that we'd be able to do something like that? Yeah. Just by buying a kit that's only fourteen ninety nine, yeah. you could be making... The how thing about, is, is you learn the skill. With that one, you've got 12 with right. the Zorn Knop. Um, and the, there's six designs, you've got 12 rings. So you can, you know, try Sorry. one, do another one, sort mm. of thing. Um, but you're also learning a skill for life. You know, once you've got this skill, you can expand it. You can, you know, do it on rings this large if mm. you want to. The point is there that it, it is the the technique. And then you'll start playing around with it and using lots of different I mean, colours. Your necklace, yeah. unbelievably beautiful. It really, really is. So you could do all sorts of things. You could actually embroider maybe a neckline if you didn't necessarily exactly, want to, to do exactly. a necklace. Embroider a dress. Why not? Yeah. There's no limit to what you can do with this. I'll tell you what would be a good idea is to go for Gina's book as well. Once you've got that, then it's a, always a reference with a hundred different buttons that you can make in that, and then you can look forward to the new one coming out end of June. Okay, we'll uh, regroup and do another demo in a second for you, but this is all about Flexi. If you would like to spread the cost, this is how it works. Flexi order has arrived at Hachanda. What is Flexi order? When you place an item on FlexiBuy in your basket, you qualify for a Flexi order, which means any other items you add to your basket will also be included in your FlexiBuy payments, so you can spread the cost over multiple monthly payments. After your first payment is made, your entire order will be dispatched. When you add at least £60 worth of any items to your shopping basket, either online or on the phone, you'll qualify for our Flexi Order offer. 
This means you can spread the cost of your order over equal monthly FlexiBuy payments, offering you the extra flexibility when you shop with us. Flexi Order, making your shopping experience with Achanda easier. Cheers, Leone. Absolutely, Flexi pays the way to go. Uh, right now. Let's show you the buttons that we can be uh, making in a matter of days. Over 40% of our brand new Svernoff's gone. I think I pronounced that correctly. Basically, it is from Germany, Austria, kind of northern Europe, and it's got such a fantastic history. All of these decorative buttons are achievable, and the instructions are included. If you do want to have a more comprehensive guide, then, of course, Gina's book is in the show today as well. But we demonstrated a few seconds ago using different colours uh, how you can do this style of button. If that's inspired you, and that was done literally in half an hour with Gina chatting to me as well and stopping and starting. So these are achievable miniature works of art. You're going to get uh, a total of 12 of the aluminium rings, and they stay within the button. They stay in the button. You don't take them out or anything like that. Two skeins of yarn from DMC as well, and also you get your uh, cotton printed fabric, which can be a beautiful reference or a swatch or a sampler. Call it what you will. It's just a lovely... Um, kind of keepsake to be honest with you and you can also use it as maybe a, a needle organizer at the same time if you wanted to do that so that is the new one today 14.99 uh, if you like the look of that one now the next one the dorset buttons which have got such a great history and heritage uh, lots of you going for this this has actually got the brass rings to it and four plastic rings so you've got uh, is it 10 yeah 10 yeah, 14 in total, 10 brass rings and four of the plastic ones. Then you're also going to get two skeins of yarn again, uh, a pink printed piece of cotton this time to make your sampler, if you want to use it for that, and to give you an idea of the sort of buttons that you can create. And the lovely thing about the, you know, nowadays is going on the internet, you can do your own research. Just put in a search bar somewhere, Dorset buttons history or something and it'll all be there for you and I'm going to do that after the show because I'm intrigued I, I didn't have any idea that the part of the world where I was born had such a heritage with uh, handmade buttons like this and they're being paid in supplies rather than financial but aren't they lovely how to do all of those is in the instructions and then we've also got down here the Macclesfield and Leek now this is the one that out of all three of them, um, Gina recommended would be possibly the easiest one. That's what she found was the easiest to do out of all of them. And you've got 14 discs here, uh, 10 large and 4 smaller. These are wood, so they actually stay within the button. So obviously don't put this on something that's going to be washed because the wood would perish. Um, you're going to get three skeins of yarn, the Macclesfield and Leek embroidered or printed cotton which then becomes of course this fantastic sampler. And these are the Macclesfield and Leek buttons. Very different to the others. Very traditional, very beautiful. There's like a plat. This one, what was that one called again, Gina, that you said? The uh, death head. The death head. There we are, look. We have no idea why. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? But maybe you know. Uh, 14 99 the price gets you that kit. And they're all proving very popular. Lots of you have gone for all three of them, actually. Okay, now we're going to go on to our Yorkshire button kit. Now, this has got the reusable cogs. So this obviously allows you to wrap the yarn round to create these wonderful uh, buttons here. Now these are actually quite modern, 1980s is what Gina was saying about these, but they, they make wonderful quirky jewellery, they make wonderful fastenings maybe on bags, um, tablet covers, things like that, um, just keeping your earphones nice and safe. You can call them an, an earring, uh, uh, like an earpiece tidy or something like that. You can use them in all sorts of ways, but the great thing about this is these are uh, plastic uh, reusable cogs so you're going to get two four six of them in different sizes so you can just build up a collection of these fantastic buttons that's proven popular as well at 14.99 you've then got your toolkit which has got that extra pair of hands two-thirds of the stock of this is gone you're going to get your beeswax which as Gina said isn't going to make the rings slippy it's actually going to have the opposite effect it's going to make it a bit tacky so it holds onto the thread two bobbins you've got your kinked safety pins there as well specifically for button making um, a little um, well, I suppose it's like a little mini pin cushion pin ball. And you've got then got your, um, that needle there was, I've forgotten what that's for now, that one. What was that one for, Gina? Tapestry needle, isn't it? Um, yes, yeah. Yeah. for if you're using um, thicker threads or uh, weight. And you've got your button measure as well. Brilliant. In the tin, which doubles up as a fixer for your 
pair of hands. There we go. Look, twelve pound ninety nine one two one three six zero is that item number. Then we've also got your odds and your evens for marking, of course, when you're doing uh, wrapping your your thread around your discs. You need to make sure that you're getting them evenly spaced, and that's what this is all about. The circle gauge set, one's odd, one even, and that's seventeen ninety nine. And you've got the positive and you've got the negative with those as well, so you can use both of them. Then we've got Gina's book, which is just fantastic. It really is. I mean, look at all the buttons on the front cover. All of these, I would imagine, inside you'll be able to do. There's a hundred designs with full instructions and blown up images and illustrations as to how to do what you want to do. And remember, Gina's background, um, not only does she do this for fun and a hobby and her business, but also she gets approached by museums. She's also been approached in the past by um, films for costume as well, where things have to be very traditional and very accurate and historical. So it really is something that you can get your teeth into and, and do a bit of research on and maybe wear what you make and transform a fairly dull button on a jacket or a waistcoat into something very special. Make it something you're known for. 311298, your item number, that's 1999. Uh, then we come on to the MDF. Now, have we got any of these left? Oh, half the stock of this is now gone. Now, these are actually. Um, shadow plaques. So shadow boxes normally have got a lot of depth to them. With buttons obviously you wouldn't necessarily want to have the depth because you wouldn't be able to see what's in them that easily but too much shadow. So you've got here a nice shallow uh, area that you can put your buttons on. It is in separate parts so if you want to use them completely separately it's entirely up to you. But all these elements that have been cut out to make the aperture you've got those in the kit as well so you can incorporate those in your designs too if you want to. I could put those four together to make a completely separate circle which, um, you know, you've got positive and negative, so you get twice as much out of it, really. So that's 9.99, gets you the whole two sets of those, 247891. And then finally, we've then got our shadow plaques in a set of four. So you've got two squares, which have got different cutout apertures, those two. And then you've got two circles, which again have apertures, but these are, again, different sizes. And then you've also got all the cutaways, so all these really useful squares and rectangles and half moon shapes that have been laser cut out. You use those to make dimension. I mean, here, for example, this gives an idea as to what Jean has done. Actually put them in here and frame them, put them on the wall. Uh, you can use the other plaques to make dimension and give something a bit of height. 9.99, the laser cut frames, you get all of those pieces, 978810. Now we do have queues on the phones at the moment, if you could use the website, um, that's the best way to avoid the queue, hachanda.com, oh that's new, I haven't seen that before, so uh, yeah, hachanda.com, all the kits are there, and uh, of course uh, you're watching us live at what, 20 to 12, I dare say this show will be repeated at some point as well overnight, but if you're watching us live, those are live stock updates for you. But the button book, get that now, and then watch out end of June when Gina will bring her latest one. It won't be a repeat or anything of that, it'll be a totally separate book that will back up the first one. So it's all there. Good. Right. Half the stock of the new set's gone. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. Gone, Ross, say it. <laughs> say it. It's off. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah, it. That's yeah, good, that's, that's right. good. Yeah. Right. Um, as I was saying, with the dorset button, you cover the ring first. Right. Okay? And so you have this edge of blanket stitch. Now, some people like to keep that on the edge, but traditionally, oh. it's pushed to the back. So you just basically run your fingers to push it oh, to so the it back. Rolls around. Yeah. Okay. Some traditional buttons actually have it pushed all the way in. To the inside. There we go. I get my. I always get it backward. There. You, yeah, so you they push it, it yeah. straight right into the inside. So, so it it's totally preference? a preference thing. Yeah. These days it's totally a preference thing. I personally like it to the back. Um, some people like it to the inside because it then fills up the space. There's mm -hmm. always a little bit of a space. And some, sometimes you need it on the outside because you want to add beads okay. or something. So there's one I did earlier. Let me like just ask that. you about the thread again. You're going to get threads in the kit to get yeah. started, but it's not it's not threads that you separate, is it? It, it is. Oh, it is yeah. Right. For, the, for the Dorset kit, it gives you instructions to separate it. Right. Um, and actually in the Macclesfield and Leak as well, some of them... Um, it will use two threads, some will use three. Okay. And always separate them one at a time and then put them back together because then you'll get a smoother finish. Right. Okay? You don't have to with the, um, the dorset buttons, but the thickness of the thread, you'll get a nicer button if you separate it and then and work it down. So I'm just going to show you a basic cross wheel and I'm going to mark this off as well. Now I'm only going to use pencil so you may not see it and you may not actually want to mark off when you're working um, 
on the thread that's already been wrapped, but it's the same principle. You're just going to make a little mark going to that point, and it will help you to just get everything lined up. And you'll notice that the thread that's still there, I've put that into one of the notches, mm -hmm. okay, because that's where we'll start. Now, over half of the Dorset kit's gone. I'm also thinking at the moment, if you are looking at this thinking, I love the idea of doing this, but I'm going to struggle visually. Don't forget we do have magnifiers, lamps and things mm. like that with um, uh, the Daylight Company. So they're on the website as well, if this yeah. is something that you're going to think of getting. Then. So we're going to, the thread is at the back. We're going to wrap over the front from bottom to top. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to do okay, six, all right? Mm -hmm. Now you'll see that there's a, a bit there that goes a bit, it's not in line. So now we need to do a few cross stitches at the center just to bring those all in to line. Now the, with the dorset, the basic dorset cross wheel, and just use your needle as you need to. You see it's going to go a little bit weird until you've actually gotten those lined up. Um, you can do a lot more spokes. Um, for time, I'm doing less. So you do, what, two cross stitches or four? It, basically what you need. I like, because this is um, the spacing that I'm doing, and I'm, it's they're quite far apart. Mm -hmm. Normally I would do... Um, three wraps for six only on something much um, smaller because the spaces are quite large but for time it I want to make sure that you can see what I'm doing so I just want to make sure that that's short short up at the center and yeah. you can also go through those stitches as well if you want to that kind of locks it in place. And just it? to lock it in place, yeah. I've got to let you know the toolkit we just put on the screen, what's coming up now, um, that's now limited stock. So it's about the one that's got the magnetic arm. That's about to go. If you'd like it, twelve ninety nine. be quick. Hopefully that means there's an awful lot of people starting and, and starting this hobby yeah. new. Yeah, or um, got the kit the last time and thought, yeah, I should have bought that as mm, well because yeah. it really, honestly, is very, very helpful. And then what you need to do is work rounding back stitches. So a rounding back stitch, we come up through one of the gaps, we come back over one of the spokes and down. So that's your back stitch. Then we rotate the button to go to the next one along, come up, back, down. Okay, mm -hmm. and you just keep doing this around and around and around. And you can see it's just gone a slightly off center. And don't worry, you can still nudge it into place a little while. Tool set's just sold out, Gina. Sorry, oh, everybody, thank if you wanted you. it. Last one's gone. And so you see, we go around and around. Now, this is the time-consuming part with the dorset button, is because most of them are filled in this way. Mm -hmm. um, they're either filled with rounding back stitches, or you put more spokes and you work over the top of it to create a flat surface, or you work over two or three of them to make the different designs. It but may, basically, it may that's take a bit what more you do. Time, but it's actually it not makes hard a, to do. Is it, it isn't. It isn't hard at all, and that's why I said that's why a lot of people tend to like this. Mm. Um, and if you start your first one, um, you do use uh, thicker thread then obviously it's made up a lot more quickly. Mm, sure. Um, so you can see it's starting to build up and you can see that a wheel is forming at the center. Sure, you can see it. Okay, and the, basically what that is going to end up being is it's gonna end up having a ridge. That's one that Chris did. And so it has a ridge at the front um, do, 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 another one with here we uh, unfortunately it's underneath all of the <laughs> others. I can lift um, this up though. That one there, yeah. Um yeah, that one's got the, the bottom one is actually the one that we need to look at. That's the one. And you see how the ridge fills out, and that is where the rounding back stitch comes in, is because it, that's forming the ridge of right. the spokes of the wheel. And so you can see the more that you have the more spokes that you put down. 
Imagine a blouse with these for buttons. Wouldn't that be They're, amazing? They are lovely. And they, you see, originally that's what they were for. Right. They were for, um, they were white and they were for whites, so they were for shirts um, and things like that, that went through, that could be washed and go through a mangle as well, hence mm. the metal rings. Much, much finer metal rings originally, and I mean, honestly, they're this small original dorsets. They're teensy, teensy little things. Maybe you're actually going to be making yourself some blouses, something in linen maybe, and you can, uh, with your machine, actually adjust the size of the exactly. buttonhole. Exactly, they're, they are great um, for shirt buttons. I, I often use them as shirt buttons because the, you, you know, depending on the materials that you <coughs> use, you can wash them. Um, I would always say that with the brass, for instance, careful of detergents. Right. Um, some detergents can make the brass go a bit funny. Um, so always test one. Mm. I have um, um, a face cloth that I stitch buttons onto and throw it in the washing machine and see how it handles. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, that's a great way to test materials and obviously this is a cotton thread so it will wash um, but if you're using sort of any of your hand colored threads or something then obviously you don't want to just throw them into the washing machine. I mean, I'd be, if it were me I'd be up in my wardrobe right now looking at blouses or shirts or whatever that I've got that I'm thinking of getting out for the spring or summer or ones that you've just bought maybe for the summer season thinking well I don't like the buttons on that. Uh, most buttons are ugly, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, most there is a... modern buttons are ugly. And one of the nicest things, I mean, something that I love to do, is I'll do the wrapped buttons, the, the fancier, the D Macclesfield and Leek buttons, for instance, and a plain black winter coat. Mm. And you can put different buttons on every day if you want to. Um, because e use the button pins and just pin them on. And you can have bright, bold crazy buttons if you want mm. or you can have you know sort I'm of subtle here, ones. Union Jack for example how patriotic is that there's actually a, a black and there's a black and white oh there's one here didn't realize yeah, that's the Macclesfield and Leek yeah um, it, it's the same wrapping style and so Chris put one of those on Chris loves the Union Jack but that's in the book the instructions for that are not in the kit right uh, but it's the same wrapping style so once you have made a death's head you will understand the principle behind making the um, Union mean, Jack. Like this one here, for example, no colour on it, just like a natural... I love that. That is an original uh, button found in a castle uh, which dates to the 15th century. Wow. And you so. can do your own recreation of that using yeah. just a very natural coloured thread yeah. and that would look amazing. Just on a, I'm just thinking like a linen shirt or something with a button like that would look absolutely superb. They also make great cuff links. You oh, can yeah? link two together. Um, and make a cuff link. I love the fact you've included photographs of the you know, the originals as yes, well. Yes, yeah, it, it helps. I think to know when when I'm referring to it, it's it's interesting to know, um, especially when I think a lot of people study costume, but they don't actually study the trimmings. Mm. Period. The trimmings they often don't make it. Don't exactly. They? That that's the whole thing. Um, if you get the trimmings wrong, then you, you have a problem. And it does make you realise just how in-depth and how precise and accurate filmmakers have to be if they're doing a period piece. And they're doing something close up and yeah. they need to, yeah. You don't yeah. think about just that level of, of thought and, and detail, but right down to the buttons, it's important. So, 1999 if you want the book. Um, half the stock of this is gone as well. Very popular, this. It's also a good read because I didn't understand. I, I don't know the history of buttons at all. I never really thought about it, to be honest, until I met you. There's a, yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> most, people, really... most people haven't. There's a lot of different snippets of information there. There's also things like um, what you can use for button molds, which is what the ring or the wood piece is referred to as a, a mold. Right. Um, and it's not just, you know, you can use a lot of things. You can, so long as your end use, if you're journaling for instance, there's nothing stopping you from using um, a piece of cardboard to make a button mm. over. Because it's not going to need to withstand the wear and tear of going through a buttonhole. Just a thought, what about if someone's got a piece uh, like a coat or a jacket or a blouse or something that's got ordinary buttons on, could mm -hmm. they take those buttons off and then go over those? Depends on the button. Right. Um, some buttons, you usually need a flat back, so you can turn them around mm -hmm. and use the back, so long as the design does not require a central hole. Right. Okay, because the Button molds have one hole. Mm -hmm. 
not. And that not is poor. yeah. Mm. And that is actually a, a remnant from being turned. They used to be turned from wood. Um, but in some designs you do need to come up through that hole to secure a thread. So if you've got a central hole you could uh, Yeah. Cover so it. so that's the biggest thing that you need. But you can there are a lot of designs where you don't need a central hole at all. It's just the fact that you need a circular form. Right. And so as I say, depending on your end use will really depend on what you're you're doing. Well, really, sky, nearly here. sky's the limit. Go for one of the kits today. Have a go. Have a play. Uh, you're going to get, you know, depends on the kit you go for, but numerous discs that you can, of course, make buttons out of. Once you've got the bug, and I reckon you'll get the bug after the first it's one. It's quite addictive, actually, mm. um, and I can be quite um, nerdy about buttons um, generally, especially discovering a new one. So, a quick, very, very quick dorset cross yeah. wheel. Isn't that amazing? There we go, look. So you can see, if you take just a little bit more time and not live on TV, you'll get everything lined up. Well, you've very nearly done two full <laughs> buttons <laughs> so. with illustrating, talking, you know, uh, demonstrating okay. at the same time. So it doesn't take it that doesn't long. It doesn't take that long. Uh, but you see, from there, you can go on and you can embellish. You could add beads. There's a lot of different variations that you can do with the different buttons. Well, if you just used a uh, different color thread on this one, Yeah, that, that Chris has used um, a variegated thread. So it's coming through randomly, the colors. And what I'd be tempted to do is to go for one of the kits and then you'll have this to, to cherish and keep for years and years to yeah. come. This is when I first started to make my own buttons. Yeah. And then before you know it, you'll be going a bit Exactly, freestyling. you can add, add more stitching. Um, the one that I did for the Zornop buttons, for instance, I, I put um, weaving to bind the page edges. Mm -hmm which I did on the loom from this morning's show. So it all, it, you know, it, it, kind of works. it all works together. Well, Gina, it's been great to see how it's done. Thank you. For, and it's the first time we've worked together here. Yes, show, isn't it? yeah. So that's exciting. <laughs> we did work together before. Uh, over here, we've got a, 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 the belly of an owl decorated. Yeah, that button. one's done with um, a, the Yorkshire button kit. Yeah. So you can see that it's, it is very similar to the Dorset, but because it's made off of the loom, you then have more sort of shapes and so on. Who'd have thought it? So many different buttons to make, so yeah. many different ways of doing it. Uh, a lit, what a, how gorgeous is that for a newborn? Just showing you here. Cute as a button. How cool is that? A lovely keepsake for a new mum, let's say. Well, I think that those are um, a perfect partner, perhaps, just button displays. Ah, right. So that means you'll, so, you'll be asked if you want those when you check out either on the mm. website or with the operator, one or the other. Gina, when are you back? Do you know? I weeks? am back at, what month are we in now? April. I'm back at the end of Nearly May. May. End of May. <laughs> yes, end of May. Great to see you again. And you. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Remember, all the button kits are still available, but they are going fast. Uh, we have sold out of the toolkit, but the book is still available as well. Thank you for watching. I'll see you a bit later on this afternoon. This is what's happening next. Yes, it's hot, hot wax and cold gel. It's a lovely marriage coming up in a second. Well, not literally, but you'll see what I mean. John next door, one day special at one o'clock, and Block Blitz is back. That's a bit later. I'm Bev, I'm from Be Crafty. We have been going for about 14 years, and four years ago we started designing and making our very own stamps just for you. All of our stamps are designed and made here at Be Crafty by my own fair hands, and we love using them for lots of different crafty projects. I love playing with our stamps and templates and getting as inky as I can, whether it's spraying or blending ink or stamping ink, paints, everything. We absolutely love it and that's what we want to show you when we come to Hashanda because we get to demo as much as we like, which is fantastic, so I can show you all the techniques that I'm learning too. So make sure you don't miss the Bee Crafty Shows on Hashanda. Hi, my name is Paul Antonio. I trained as a calligrapher, gilder, and heraldic artist at Ragged School of Art and Design. 
So the glimmer hot foil plates, most of which are calligraphic, can be used in tandem with a range of stamps that I've designed, as well as some of the embossing and cutting dies that I'm working on. And these can all be used together or separately. I've designed them to help you produce beautiful work, not just on its own, but so that you can also put your own handwriting coupled with that work. So those cards that you produce for your friends, for your families, would have your own touch stick, not just mine. And make sure you don't miss me showing you how to use the Spellbinders products in my particular way on Ochanda. The Sizzix Multi-Tool is a must-have for all your craft projects. Double-ended with both a distress and cutting head, the ergonomic grip allows for easy use with your A3 cutting mat. This self-healing mat comes with precision grids in both imperial and metric and 0-90 to degree angle measurement for precision crafting. Add this to your crafty stash at hochanda.com. Hello, we are live. Now we've got something very exciting. We're, uh, we're all kind. Yes, we are live, Bob. <laughs> it's we're all live. good, though. It's all good. <laughs> yes, we are. Off to, <laughs> off to a good start. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> but this is what it's like Morning. when you're working with people that are so creative. Don't throw us under the bus. We're out of our comfort zone here. <laughs> right. Well, that is interesting you should say that. We've got Mike Hello. here with us. We've got Barbara. Yes, yeah, so just took her next so because was going to whack the microphone. Yeah. I was so just getting the technical. We're all good. Way. We're all good because guess what? We've got something very exciting for the show. Mike and Barbara are swapping roles. Ta da! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you'll know, of course, from Encorsic Art. We've got that on the show. We've got some great products for you. Barbara, you will know from Clarity. We've got some great products on the show. But they're swapping. We're going so, to do a bit of a skill swap. Mm, so, I, I, I feel like jelly. <laughs> so, Mike, what will you oh, be doing Jenny, for us? I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be doing the gel press, okay. which is a, a form of printing. Yes. And, um, and Barbara showed me how to do this just a few days ago. And so it's just so exciting. Perfect. I think everyone should have a go at this. It's brilliant. Great. Well, you're going to have a go at this. This is going to show you at home how you can use this. This is what... Mike's going to be using. Bring it in. Just Bring it in. It. It's a mixture of the gel Wheel it presses. In. There we Thank are. you. Handing Bob, it over, Mike. Oh, no, I want to know what you're going to do first of all before oh. you go. Come on in, come back. You're not getting away that easy. <laughs> what are we going to see from you? Oh, I'm going, I'm going to be ironing. There you oh, go. Yeah. I never thought I'd start ironing yeah. on TV, but there you go. But you'll make it interesting, won't yes, you? Yes, I am. I'm definitely going to be ironing today. <laughs> but ironing with encorset wax. Absolutely, yeah. 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 So uh, Mike and I have been friends for many, many years. Yeah. And, uh, and when my kids were little, we always enjoyed doing encaustic art. And it was a really, it was, it was a fun thing to do. Yeah. And it is. And I, I never thought I'd actually do it on live TV. Right. But there you go. I'll rise to any challenge, So we'll see if we're still friends at the end, did not we? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking earlier in the meeting. It's like swapping each other's children. So let's see what you do yeah. uh, on your side, and we'll see what you do on your side. Uh, you're laughing we'll see what I, she's laughing because I'm going first. <laughs> and also, because yesterday Mike and I had a meal together, and Mike said, I'm looking for a retirement direction, a path. I think I might be it <laughs> <laughs> in a minute when you see what I do. Be like, all right, that's the end of that then. Uh, <laughs> you'll be all right, oh, Mike. Dear. You'll be fine. You can. We'll it's going to it's be a be... fun show. Right, Barbara, we'll let you get. <laughs> You get gone and set up. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, Mike, here we go. Yes, we've got the gel presses on the show. And we've got a few different sizes for you. So we'll just run through these before we get through to the demo so you know what we've got. Uh, so with the gel presses, we have got, first of all, your printing plate, uh, which is the large one. So this is your gel press. This is the large one. Those are the details on the screen. It is £39.99. This is the Clarity Stamp Large. It's 8 inches by 10. It is the gel pr uh, press printing plate. And you also get the 9 by 11 mega mount. So we've got that available on the show. We'll talk you through how to use all of these throughout the demos. We've also got um, other sizes for you. We also have a freedom price on that, by the way. Uh, there you go, £35.99. Uh, that means you get discounts a freedom member it's a delivered price to your door we've also got the size down 
and this is by seven this is seven inches by seven inches this is also with the mega mount it's 24 pounds and 98 pence if you want to go for that one three seven six seven nine seven six by six gel press and the seven by seven six by six six by six you know, i wondered what that was in my ear all i heard was six six i'm glad that. you didn't say the third one Otherwise, it would have been crazy. <laughs> right, so that is um, that. All your details are on the screen. Um, and then we've got the different shapes. Now, on this one, you've got your circular, your triangle, the circle, the triangle, and the square. You can see those in there. £19.99. And, and you also get the mega mount. So you can mount it on that. Again, all will become clear <coughs> when we start demonstrating with Mike. And then we've got uh, the other shapes, which is the rectangle, the oval, and the hexagon. Uh, and also that comes with the mega mount. You've got the mega mount separately. If you want to get a hold of those, head to the website to see all the details. Sorry, Mike, needed to run through that quick. That's brilliant. Oh, of course again. Right, here we are. Space, oh, my Mark. fault! <laughs> 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 I'm really joking. Uh, right, Mike. Okay. So we've put it off long enough. We've put it off long enough. The moment has arrived. Yes. I haven't turned to jelly, really. This is really a lot of fun. If you've mm. never done this before, do it. Um, the, these are gel press, and they come in the packet like that. Okay. And they're, they're just little squiggly bits of jelly. Um, and you put paint on them and then press them down. And that's why they're called a gel press. And Clarity came up with the great idea of using this mount block thing. Um, sorry, I'm down there. So we've got the jelly. And we've got the mount block. So what's it called? I've forgotten. Mega mount. Mega, mega mount. mount oh, thank Bob, you. <laughs> it's a mega mount. Oh, yeah, and yeah. and the, the thing is, if you've just got the no gel, pressure. you just have to press the paper on top, and you can't see what you're doing. Yeah. So Clarity, what their name says, they have done. They've made it very clear so that now, when you press it down, you can see what you're doing. Yes. Perfect. Clarity. So I'm just going to do something. I'm using acrylic paint, and this is just um, cheap high street acrylic paint. Okay. Cheap shop stuff. And I'm just putting little bits on here, and the amount that you put on is quite important. If you put too much on, it'll be very squidgy, yeah. and it'll take a lot longer to dry. Okay. And if you don't put enough on, obviously you won't colour it. Okay. So now I've done the paint, and this is called um, a brayer. <laughs> Ray. Do you want me to leave the building? <laughs> And what you do... Is Barbara making you a bit nervous? No, I can what, tell her to no, go away. It's okay. It's she won't okay, listen okay. to me, okay, but look. I can tell her. Can you see? You need a close-up of this now. Because Can you see how much paint is on there? Not much. Just see like half a pea each okay. piece. And you just put the brayer down like that, and you lift and roll like this. And I'm moving it up and down a little bit. I taught him well. You did. <laughs> and now I've covered it. Now I found, uh, one thing I found out, look, if you hit the edge... Yes. ...and then you roll, you get that <clears> line. See that? Okay. So, so what can happen is you go along, you hit the edge, and then you go the next time and you get these lines. So try and lift up as you get to the end. Very good. So that's it. When you put the brayer down, don't put it that way down, don't put it that way down, put it like that okay. so that the brayer is lifted up yep. and um, safe out of the way. Perfect. Now this is already drying. What I'm going to do is take my rubber comb. Mm. And these are available on the show as well. This so look super. how this technique is used. And I'm just going to do a quarter with that, just to create an effect. Let's just, just do a little bit more there. So I've got some rubber comb there. I'm going to take a sponge. Yeah. And when you put the sponge down, that textures it. So in a way, what you're doing is you're removing paint so you can see through. You've got some transparency going on. Okay. And then I'm going to take one of my little uh, white sponges and I'm just going to make a spot and remove some of that. So I could print with that look straight away. Yeah, instantly. And then you take your copy paper. I'll get some down here. This is regular copy paper. And you put this down, position it how you want, place it down. You can see what you're going to get already. Mm. Press hard and lift it up. Oh, and you've got your that. first print. That is perfect. Look at the colour there with the yellow. I, didn't, I did not expect it to be that vibrant when it came off. And you can notice that you've still got some stuff left, left on the... Um, gel press itself yes and I'm going to come back to that in a minute because I want that to dry off mm -hmm. and then I'll show you something interesting in a minute so I'm you were using your hands there Mike would you yeah. be able to use uh, a stamping platform or Barbara but if you're using the gel press would you could you use it would you use a stamping platform no. to that just use your hands to press down no I wouldn't I just use because it's drying so fast you yeah. don't want to be faffing right so it's on and then up. yeah 
Great. I think that's the whole the whole purpose of the Mega Mount. Really, yes. is it's on its own like that. I think. I mean, if you're using the stamping platform just as a flat acrylic base. Yes. But a stamping platform usually is for positioning, isn't it? Yes. Sorry. Go on. Go on. You carry on. <laughs> I'll right, move you away. Carry on. No, no. You carry on. Good question, on. though, because if you've never used the gel press before. Yeah. Cleaning, water, water and electricity don't really mix, so keep them separate and keep the top on the bottle and put it away when you're not using it. Okay. I've just got a bit of cloth, and I just, one, one of the things that Barbara showed me for cleaning was just to roll like that. So if I just roll, I've got rid of most of it, but I can clean all of it off if I just use my cloth. So I'm just using that with a bit of water, because I'm going to change my colours now, and I'm going to make a landscape, because I'm Mr. Encaustic. So for landscape, what I've done is I've chosen some colours. There they are. And I'm just going to bring these colours up. And I'm just going to start with my blue. And I'm putting that here. A little bit more, because it's a bigger plate now, so maybe a little bit more. And then I'm going to go to yellow down there. So I'm going to lay all the colours that I'm using in one go. Put a white. And these all go on at the same time? I'm doing the whole thing in one go, yeah, Mr... Hit it in one. I, I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Get it done. So I'm used to... See, I'm, I'm putting an encaustic mind to... Um, oops, don't do that. To a, um, a different type of product. Mm. So I'm taking what I know and using those skills in an environment that isn't the one that I know. And that's interesting. You might be thinking the same at home. By the way, if you've got any questions, please do email in. It is studio at hochanda.com or you can leave your messages on Facebook. So same thing again. I'm just blending those colours. So this is going to be my sky area, obviously. Um, and the then, one you're using is a 6x6, six six, in case you're wondering, £24.98. And, and cleverly, what I did was I put brown in the middle so I yeah. can overlap that and you don't really notice too much. Otherwise, you get the edge of the, the bray. If I go up here, I'll get a, a line from yes. the edge of the bray. Yes. And now what I'm going to do, so I've got my, basically, I've got my colours. This is my landscape. It's going to be that way up. Look. That's amazing. Like that. And now I'm going to use the edge of the, the bray to make a line. Can you see that line there? Yeah, I can. And I'm going to go underneath again. And another one here. So that's going to be basically my landscape. And then I'm going to take the comb and I'm just going to do a little bit of... Uh, you can bend the comb like this, look. See that? Yeah. So then you don't get all the marks. You don't, I don't want all the marks, I just want a little bit. So now I'm going up and doing some sort of grassy effects. Clean that off. I love the way the colours that you put on there and then just use the brayer gave you the backdrop, mm. the sky, you've got the sun rising or setting, or you could turn that into maybe some foliage in the background, then you've got the brown for the hills, I, and I then the... I could use a sponge. The foreground is fascinating. I could use the edge of the white sponge, so if I just go here, I can do some of these going up. You'll see them in a minute, you'll see how they work. So I've got some curvy ones there now. Yeah. And I could do, oops, use one of my little scrapey tools. I'm use these in the wax, so I can do some long ones there, but just showing you different effects of grass yes. foliage stuff. Um, and one more I'm going to do, and this one, what I'm going to do, these things come on backing like that. Yep. And I found that you can put a stamp onto that, because yes. I, I like messy working. Yes. One thing though, don't put the jelly on the hot plate because you get the jelly press yes. turns into a jelly mess. Yes, don't, don't mix it in that way. It doesn't work with heat, so this is a cold thing. So take that um, uh, backing stuff and then just take a stamp, let's lean over there, and just put this stamp on in the corner and it sticks to it quite nicely. And now I can just use a stamp to work into this. So I'm just going to make some flowery things and stuff, flowers. Like that. Oh, look how effective that is. Right, now I'm going to print this. Okay. So I need a bit of my copy paper. Make sure you don't drop it, because I did that once already. Uh -huh. And then just place it down. And you can see what you're going to get already. See that? Yeah, you can. That is amazing. Press, peel up. Oh, wow. And I've got my landscape. And again, this here, see this stuff that's still on there? Yes. All that? 
That's going to dry off. I'm going to show you that with the other thing. Okay. If you do want to go for the tools that Mike was using there, that is absolutely stunning. From the moment that the Brea went across and just delivered those three or four colours that were used instantly, like an instant landscape, um, that was perfect. And then all the added detail that's been added with the tools. So you've got your comb, you've got your sponge, uh, the comb. We'll bring the details up uh, for that. We are very, very busy for this. You've seen how it works. Uh, so £11.99, pence, but it's also uh, a set of sponges with that as well. £10.79 pence is a freedom price. That is a fabulous price, it really is, to get these um, tools. This is your Encaustic Art Rubber Comb Triangle and Sponge Set. But as Mike has shown there, you can also use it with the gel plates as well. So I think that's a must-have. I just carried on while you were doing that. Yes. So, <laughs> so I'm, using, do. I'm using a little stamp, one of Barbara's lovely stamps. Um, yeah. Clarity stamps are so good. And I've just stamped some, a little bird across my uh, landscape here. So um, I could take a different one, couldn't I? Oops. And I'm just using it on, again on this thing. Let's go one the other way. Uh, there we are. Love that. Deep. Absolutely stunning. Isn't that remarkable? Uh, and this is from Mike, who hasn't used the gel presses in particular. Did a bit of training after a, a dinner with Barbara where the idea came up. Um, but it really is remarkable. And these are the things that you can do when you get them home as well. But as promised, we are mixing and matching our guest today. So thank you for that, Mike. Brilliant. We're going to come back to Mike. We just want to recap with the gel presses behind us. Shall we just bring that in or leave Brilliant. it where it is? Yeah, we'll just, where's that lady? Gone. Oh, I don't know. She's <laughs> some. Oh, Oops, she's here. Oh, here she is. <laughs> right, we didn't he do well? He did. He did really Absolutely well. Absolutely amazing. Did Can really I have a closer like look? I need to sort yeah. of stand like that to get all three of us in. So let's Isn't run you superb? through. It is absolutely divine. That is that is so cool. So that is the gel press with paint and um, an encaustic flavour with all those, I mean those sponges, I've been playing with the sponges okay. and the comb, yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah, they Look really it, are. Because it really takes all the paint out, which is why you get, it's like a negative painting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, like, like, negative it's painting. like using white work, yeah, but you've actually taken so cool. the paint away. So Love that. Cool. The thing we haven't shown is that you could over, over print that. Yes. And fill that with different colours. But I like it as a negative yeah, nice painting. Like that, oh, it yeah. really yeah. pops, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, really, really yeah. does. And really the little nice. stamps, they're really good as well. Yeah, thank and you. They bring lovely texture to yeah, it. Yeah, no, excellent piece of artwork. Well, right. this has been used no using pressure, then. the gel press. Yeah, no pressure. You go and get ready then, <laughs> missus. Go on. Go and do the ironing, missus. Go and turn your ironing on. <laughs> uh, I've, got, I've got some shirts in the basket. Uh, right, let's just talk you through. So the far left um, over here, we've got the large, and that also comes with the uh, mega mount as well. This isn't the most popular, actually. £20 is your first payment of two. It is available on FlexiBuy. Imagine using that to make a larger image like that. How amazing is that going to be when you get it home? Uh, the freedom price on that, £35.99 pence if you want to go for that. Now, the size down from that, which is what Mike used, it is the 6x6, and you also get the 7x7 mega mount as well. If you want to go for that, it's £24.98. And again, just to show you that beautiful artwork made and created just by using that one gel press and the brayer. Amazing. And the tools available on the show. Then we've got some shaped gel presses. You've got your square, triangle, and round. You can see them there. If I lean them forward, there you go. Uh, and you also get, of course, the mega mounts with those, and that's nineteen pounds and ninety-nine pence. The other shapes that are available to you are rectangle, oval, and the hexagon, which are just there, just to show you those. So you can see the sizes, and you also get the mega mount as well. So versatile, and so much that you can make and create with these fabulous designs. And I'm sure you're going to uh, enjoy using them. Just a, a sample there of the hexagon, just so you can see the size of that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Love that. Yeah. Very nice design. 039641 is your item number if you want to go for those. All the details on the website so that you can get to all of your um, 
uh, gel presses and the ones that you want. Mike, thank you very much. We're coming back to you. Right, I'll see you in a bit. So get ready for your next one. That army. was just really, amazing. Really worth getting these. Fantastic. Certainly was. Lovely. Right, we have got the Encaustic Art set for you. It's a starter kit. It and is. this is what Barbara is going to be using. Uh, two payments of £25. It's an excellent price. It is available on FlexiBuy. So £25 today and then £25 in a month's time. So with that, you get the iron, you get the wax blocks as well. You get 16 of those you get 40 sheets of card uh, in two different sizes and you've got 30 sheets of a6 and 10 of a5 so a really good size to work with and you get your scribing tool and you also get the instructions as well so we are now swapping our trades it's like yeah. a trade-off um, a craft off that's what it is it's a craft off uh, we've seen Mike uh, with the gel press and now Barbara it's you. I go. It's I've got you. the iron on. Yeah. I've got lovely. the iron on. I'm ready to rock and roll. Thank you, Mike, for trusting me with your company. <laughs> you're, you're fantastic. Carry on, <laughs> well, you've done this before, haven't you? Uh, yeah, but not, not seriously. In, no, not in not this seriously. Format. So what we're going to do is make sure that the iron's on and not too. So I've got it on on low-ish. Yeah. Okay. Just lowish. And if it starts really running, then I know I need to turn it down. And I'm all I'm using is what we've got in the starter kit. Okay. And I recommend this. I recommend this highly. This is one of the most therapeutic, lovely things that you will you will ever do. And it's not hard. Yeah. It's not hard. These are a couple that I've yes. done. Yes. Can just we show in these first? Goes, <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you that it, it is possible. <laughs> uh, these are great. These are really beautiful. Uh, so this is all I want pictures. to show you is the basics. So you can see here. I just want to show you how to lay down a landscape, how to put a lake in there, how to, oh, wow. if you get time, I'll show you how to put a moon in. Look at that. That's really easy. Love that. Uh, it's different colours, ways, you see. Yes. I'll show you how to do the birds. I this like is the all real Mike like the stuff, isn't it? That you've got in there, but yeah. the thing is, when Mike does this, everybody thinks, oh, well, it's Mike Bosson, so it's not achievable. But actually, it's really achievable. Yeah. And you can see here, now the ones with the stamps, obviously, this is enter, enter the Clarity stamps. We'll be doing that later. And I also wanted to show you that just this sort of smearing yeah. makes fantastic backgrounds. Yeah, it does. And sometimes, oh, this wow. one, for example, like that, you know, sometimes you've just got to know when to stop. <coughs> and I did this one sweep and then I thought right I can I don't know if you can see it that's sky good. yeah and then you the, see the, the sea coming yeah. in there we are actually Mike, I thought that's a little bit like silver the bay at silver it just a bit that. yeah and I it thought was. right you just got to know when to stop and then that one's well, one for Ron we'll leave that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually did um, uh, a picture I've sent a, an email into the studio so they might try and find that uh, and I'll show you that later and I've never ever touched any of the encaustic art uh, before and I created a picture. It was live on air, actually. We'll show you that later, just to show you that anybody, anybody can do it. It is. It's mm. very, very doable. And what we can do now is, I'm a lefty, so I'm going to hold, I get my card. This is, um, this is actually the same, exactly the same as Clarity card. It's encaustic card. Yeah. And what we'll do is, we'll, we'll pop that on there, and then I'm going to low, I'll put it away, actually, just in case I dribble. <laughs> And what we're going to do is, I'm going to load the, the iron and I'm going to keep it s straight like this. Okay. And then I can decide what colours I want to use. So, for example. So, that's how we do it. We put the wax onto the iron. For anyone that's never seen this before, it's yeah. not the wax onto the paper. No, and I'm going to put a little bit of blue and a little bit of yellow. I know, I'm mixing it up. I know, I, I know. Oh, it's a little bit hot. That's all right. We'll work with this. We're going with it. We're going to go with, with it. it. Right, so I'm going to move that across. See, it's moving quite a lot, isn't it? But I like it. I reckon this would be handy. And then maybe a little bit of red in there. Should we put a bit of red in there? Yep. See, and I'm looking down towards the bottom of my picture, and now I think I'm going to go in with that lovely green. What do you think, Mike? Don't say a word. Okay. I reckon that'll do. <laughs> and then maybe a little bit more of that colour down there. Okay. I've got a little bit of a gap there, so I, I'm thinking a bit more blue up there. The iron looks a little bit... Is that a bit of hot, Mike, do you think? So look. Here we are. No, it's perfect. Is it? Yeah. Right, ready? Some, some of the colours are more liquid than others. OK, right, now he tells me. Right, so I'm going to hold it like this. You ready? Yes. And then I'm going to lift it over like so, so it didn't dribble, and then I'll pop it down on the card, and I'll give it a little wiggle so, to just to sort of engage, and then I'll run it across. You see how I'm sweeping a little bit? I'll go back again, and then I'll run it through again lightly. So now it's starting to look it's like something, nice. yeah. isn't it? 
Got a couple of bubbles there, that's interesting. I'm not sure about that. But we'll give it a go. And now I'll just wipe that off there. And now I've got it, I'm going to get a landscape going okay. here, right? So the idea is. Let's have a look at this. Don't worry about me. Let's check this out. Can you see this all right? We can. Right. We so can that indeed. looks like a... Now I'm going to come across here and I'm going to make a... a, a I'm going to make a, a hill. Yeah. Right. Now, to make a hill, I'm thinking, I want a lighter green. Where's my lighter green gone? I had a light green. There it is. There it is. There you go. Right. I think I'm going to add a light green. Okay. Right. Because... Oh, hang on a minute. Mike told me this. If I go in like that, I'm going to pop the light green up there, because this is going to be where I want to work. Okay. Right? Inside. So now, I'm coming in, and I'm coming in like so, and I'm just going to sweep across like a hill. Yes. Do you see? I do. And then I'm going to come in this way, and I'll sweep that way, so that hill is in front of that hill. And then I'll come across again, and I keep sweeping, and then, on this side now, excuse me a moment, I'm just going to sweep across there like that. So I've got my background, and this is going to be my, my, my lake. Lake. I like that, yeah. Right? So you can see now I've got that moody background, I've got the hills in the background, and now I've got my lake. And that could right. be a building in the background. You know when you, you make it, you see all kinds of different things, don't you? You do, you do. And this here is also, for me, this is going to be a piece of artwork as well, which sounds a bit mad, but you wait till you see what we can do with the scrap as well. Okay. So now I've got that, and I just want to get rid of some of that to a clean start, and I think I want to just work a little bit on the front part. So now I'm going to start... Um, let me have a look. I think I'll go with... Uh, let me go with a little bit of light green. Now, because I want to work on the front, I need to see where I'm putting it. So, for example, let's put a little bit of light green on here, like that, mm -hmm. right? Just got to remember, I, I don't know... If I say I don't know what I'm doing, that's not fair. I've got a rough idea. So let's say I want to do some hills in the front. Now, so I've got a hill there, but let's say I hold the... I'm going to hold the artwork in my hand now so I can, I can curl it, you see? I can curl it. And what I'm going to do now is start adding some grass. Look, see? So now I'm going to start adding the depth to it. And then I'll take a darker colour. I want a bit darker in there, so I'm yeah. going to go with the blue now and maybe add a bit of blue down here. That looks good, look. And then you just start looking at what you're doing. So, see... <coughs> So that you put looks the wax better. on first and then you manipulate it using the iron as and a tool. The, and the most, the most impressive part of this, watch, yeah. I've put a little bit of brown. So I'm using, I'm putting the wax on the iron yep. where, I, where I want to, you see? So yep. I can put it in there and I can come through here and every time that I hit the hot wax or the hot iron on the colour before, see how I keep knocking out the layer in front of it? So yep. now it's getting darker. Now this is the front path. There you go. Look. Do you see that? I do, yeah. I so now that. I'm going to, and it's really dark up the back, so I'm going to say, then you've got to know when to stop. So let's say that will do for that job. Yep. And now I've got a couple of tricks I want to show you. Go on. So, for example, how are we doing for time? All right. Uh, Time-wise, um, we're about halfway through the show, so we've got oh, about 35 minutes left. Okay. So let's say I want to do a couple of grasses. So if I come in here and I go up, like that. Off, I'm, I'm playing it safe. I'm coming in off the top, right? And I cut across like that. Look, and I'm just using the edge of the iron and I'm just cutting through like that. And it looks like grass. And because I'm working from the front, doesn't that look good? It does. And if I want to push them back a bit so they're behind, look, all I've got to do is take a bit of... Do you see? Just yeah. take a bit of colour there, bring that in like so, and then suddenly they've been moved back a bit. Yeah. See, I think that's great. It's amazing. And then... Right now, the sky, you've got to know when to stop, haven't you? You've got to know when you're ahead of the game, really. <laughs> That's the trick. That's that the is trick. the trick. But it's, so, it's, it's addictive. Let it me is. show you this one. One more trick. Okay. Have I got time? Uh, yes. Just about. Yes. Just about. Let me show you this trick. If I wanted to put a moon in there, yep. right, I've got this spongy, this sponge from yep. Mike's sponges. This is really cool. Yeah, and they come in a sponge kit. They are available with the comb tool as well. We're very, very busy for those. We'll bring the details up. They're the screen, really Barbara, good and they so work so well on the gel press yeah, as well. Yeah, they do. Now, if I, if I, I'm going to add a little bit of um, tissue to this because it will soak up the, and I'm going to use Can my... I just move that into the middle just so Sorry. we can see it on the overhead? Could I move your picture into the middle? Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Right, so I'm going to heat my... This should work. Give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah, it'll work. It will work. 
and then I'm going to pop that into the dark area like that and maybe squish it a little bit yeah, yeah. and then lift it I needed it to be a bit hotter Mike yeah make it a bit hot probably can I on the other. Can go I again the trick? Yeah, if you heat the pad up underneath heat the pad up put the iron down on the pad no on the pad just heat on here look. here yeah just ah. hold it ah, right. just hold it there just hold it there no have a rest <laughs> Release and relax and rest. rest. It worked. Okay, oh, fine. I know why it worked. It was because right. I was using the hot plate. No, get ready to lift it up. You need it. You still need that. Yeah. Yeah, and put it back under there. Now put it like on that. There. No, put that on there like just that. Give it a moment. And right, twist it and lift. Oh, I like that one. Ah, I yes. like that a lot. That's it. That's That'll do me. Yeah, perfect. That'll do. Stopping perfect. right there. You've got to stop when you've got to know when to stop. That is fabulous. Let me hold this up so you can see it. Uh, I like now, it. Now, Barbara, well done, yes. Barbara. Well done. I think, yes, a round of applause for Barbara, yeah. please. I'm you. happy with that myself. Uh, now, <laughs> it, it's... Well done. <laughs> that was all right, wasn't it? Yes, quite scary, isn't it? Skills uh, uh, But it's great. Yeah. Right. You both did really well. And, Barbara, Thank I know you you've that. had a bit of practice with this. Oh, it's... A bit of practice. Can I show? Have we got that picture? Uh, I'm going to show you a picture because I had zero experience, and I did a show with Mike. I had zero experience. Look at that. Perfect. So you I see? put the bird in, the grass, yeah. the perspective, and that's and me with yeah. zero experience. It is. It's so doable.